Yes, the first state of the union, as you can all very well tell. Um, before I get started ranting, I want to just take as much time as possible to appreciate every single one of you, uh, appreciate everybody who's listening at home, um, appreciate everybody who will listen to this in the future. I'm sure that this will garner uh, you know, many people that want to learn about how the broker app is evolving, uh, how they can take advantage of it, how the product or the platform in and of itself is is able to fit into what they're already doing or what their prospects are already doing, which is obviously our objective. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, the broker app is one pivotal element of a multifaceted ecosystem, uh, which uh, we call Global Exchange. It's a company I co-founded in 2017, and we focus on building uh, exchange software, but we we manifest that in a variety of very interesting applications, both consumer and enterprise. Some of the brands that we've built have done you know, really well, and the broker app is one of our legacy products that we've now rebranded um, as it's as it's evolved into something that's like, you know, in even as objectively as I can be, and I probably can't be as objective as I like, but it's it's breathtaking in what it's able to do. The reason for the these weekly calls is, you know, I was talking to Alan earlier today. I was like, I want this to be like a newsletter. Um, I don't want it. I don't want people to feel obligated to come. I don't want people to feel that they need to extract something from it. Really, what this is 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 the opportunity for us as a management team and me, obviously speaking on behalf of the development team, uh, able to convey to you what's in the pipeline, because the field. Um, and the field being as diverse as it is geographically from a priority perspective, even um, we want to make sure that you guys have the breadth of knowledge or at least access to knowledge with these videos being posted online that you can use when confronting a potential business opportunity. And so it's going to be a continuously evolving process. It's going to be great chock full of information, but really, you know, above all else, I kind of want you this to be for your entertainment purposes because it'll be just a lot of really exciting news. Um, if you guys have like practical requirements such, such as training, uh, such as, uh, you know, how to recruit more people or such as how to, you know, double down on a particular niche of the product line and, and use that to grow your business. Um, you know, I'm sure we can get into some of that on these calls, but really, you know, we want to, uh, we want to use most of the time to just do a unilateral convey of as much information regarding the updates that are already in the app and the ones that are coming over the next week. Alan, is that a fair, you know, standard objective way to go about what we're doing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're going to gather up uh, questions with, uh, for each week, uh, get them to your sort of by day, and then with that last chance to incorporate as many of them you're fitting for the new event and new uh, for that Beautiful. Okay. So with that being said, I think that if you have any of those questions right now, or you have sentiments and or, um, you know, things that you want to tackle, then I could, you can say them right now, or maybe you can, you know, you can kind of uh, paraphrase what you've heard over the last week, because this is our first week. So I know you never had a chance to kind of properly gather those things, those, those, uh, topics. If you have things that you want me to address, like you know that this is what people are concerned with, or you know that this is what people are interested in, I could start with that. If not, I'm going to start where I left off from our last call. And yeah. although this is our first state of the union, on the last call, I went through a detailed explanation. Um, that call that I don't know has been posted to YouTube yet, but I'm sure Alan will get that posted to YouTube really soon. Am I right, Alan? Well, it's been posted already to uh, one of the websites I sent, but it was also... Okay which I assume you would be passed on your guys. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, if it was sent to me, then it's passed on. So I need to check if it's been passed right, on. So just okay. cover what you were talking about. The big thing really right now that everybody wants is because, you know, the 31st is coming up and yeah. uh, the day after tomorrow. It, and it uh, a lot of people are ready to pay for the last two, three, four weeks. And as you know, we've all had some little hiccups here and there. We just, sure. everybody just wants to get in, get established. Yeah. And yeah. uh, of course, I already mentioned that as long as you're getting registered uh, with brokerapp.io by the end of the 31st midnight, then we're going to extend them a 10 days to keep that October price solid for them. Yeah, that's correct. Well, I um, well, the good news is I don't. I guess this might be. Well, yeah. First, the piece of good news is what you just said, which is that there is a 10 day uh, period whereby they can get start. They can pay for their October pricing even in the first 10 days of November, which is. As you say, three hundred and ninety-nine dollars, or as I say, four hundred. Um, uh, yeah. The yeah, yeah, but you know what? Just to make sure it's clarified, if a guy comes to me on the first, he's yeah. paying four hundred. 
Sorry, so, yeah, can you repeat that or elaborate on that? Right. I'm saying is it's not we're extending it to the 10th of May. We're only extending it for those who are in by the 31st registered, just even just as yeah. a customer for yeah. the 10th. The people yeah. that come for the first time on the 1st of November, it is yeah. 400 plus the 99. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And that's that's how we have articulated the message to the field, and that's great. Um, let's. Okay. Well, I I sent a video to Alan uh, today doing an end to end demonstration of registering and getting my license. Um, that video will be posted online on YouTube as well. Um, if you want me to do that, I can do that right now. I guess is a perfect way to start. Please right see how, we'll put it up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let me just go through it quickly because I think if I think if you're saying that's the focal point, just people need to know how to get started. I'm gonna start with that, and then I'll go into kind of the more you know bells and whistles, bells and whistles type of stuff. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. So I'm in the broker app here, and I'm already logged in. And tell me if you can see something at some point. But I'm already logged in, and what I'm doing here is I'm looking to purchase my license. I'm looking to, you know, stop being a free user, which I'm completely okay to be and still able to, to monetize, um, you know, but limited in that case, I'm willing, I'm wanting to get started and lock in my license, um, the broker prime license. So what do I do? Well, first and foremost, I have to go and make sure that I have funds in my wallet. So what I just did there is I clicked on the hamburger menu button right there. If you saw, there's a hamburger menu button right here. And I click on wallet. So when I click on wallet, I, this is all of my, you know, crypto and fiat wallets that are available in the broker app. And I need to have the sufficient funds for the license I'm purchasing in my, one of my wallets. So I'm going to get it in USD right here. So as you can see, I have 300 USD, right? And I had actually 700 USD, as you can see, right? But I spent 400 USD on the license to show up Alan. So now I'm down to 300 USD. So I'm going to have, I'm 100 USD short. And so first, and at the end of the day, I could be 100 USD short. I could be all 400 USD short. I'm still short. So the main thing you need to do is get funds onto your wallet. There's a couple ways to do that. Now, to get crypto onto the wallet is pretty straightforward. You click the crypto you want, say Bitcoin, and you click deposit, and then you click Bitcoin, and it'll give you your Bitcoin address. Say you have Ethereum or Tether or Bitcoin or whatever, and you want to spin it into USD and buy your license, then you can do that um, on the sister app to the broker app called Instacrypto, which you would use your same credentials for. And this is a, this is the part that I wanted to go over because I wanted to be very clear on this is that like, if you need to trade to be able to access the funds for your license, you need to do that in Instacrypto or you can do that in an, another exchange deposit it into the coin that you want. But I'm gonna go through that entire process. So as you can see, same thing in my Instacrypto wallet, I have Ethereum. Ethereum valued at 0.9 Ethereum, which is 366 USD. So if I convert this into USD, I will have enough to be able to buy my license. So I'm going to do that by making a trade, clicking USD, buy, and letting it load up, and going through the various options to allow um, my Ethereum to first be converted into dollars. So click, and if you don't know what I'm doing right now, and that means you've never heard of Instacrypto, do not worry. This is not the call for that, but it's pretty straightforward. It's essentially the application that you're even, the reason you're getting your brokerage license is because of Instacrypto. Instacrypto is the consumer app that your users will be able to use to do exactly what I'm doing right now, which is buy, sell, trade cryptocurrencies so that you can get paid on it. So this is a great, 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 great example of the power of this ecosystem, because literally in order for me to even buy my license, I'm doing a trade. Like I don't even care about the trade. I'm just object trying to accomplish an objective. Meanwhile, my upline is going to make a fee both off of the trade. And then when I go buy my license, he's also going to make a commission. And maybe on the commission on the license, I would have felt like I lost some money. I would have felt like I spent $400, but for damn sure, I don't feel like I lost anything on this trade. If anything, I feel quite enthralled on the fact that I was able to trade so swiftly and my upline is monetized on both. So um, worldwide 35 currencies, so I could see what I could do. I could change any one of these currencies into USD. So I have Ethereum, so I'm gonna click Ethereum. Method is vault, means internalized. And then it's gonna say, which banker do you wanna use? Global exchange. And then it's going to say, well, how much ETH are you trying to sell? Well, I'm trying to get some uh, $200 worth of ETH. It gives me a live quote on the spot. It's going to cost me 0.544 ETH. Great. Confirm quote. Proceed. And immediately it's swapping my Ethereum for dollars. And 
like I said, my upline got paid on that. Actually, everybody above me got paid on that. And I'm excited because I just have USD. Now, very simply, I can, can I just transfer my USD from my Insta Crypto to my broker app. How do I do that? I click this button right here. I click connect. I click, I'm transferring between my own vaults. I Then it's going to ask me, well, which app are you sending from? Well, I'm sending from Insta Crypto. It's already selected. All right, Sharpan. Well, which of the assets are you sending? I'm sending US dollars. Okay, well then which app are you sending it to Sharpen? I'm sending it to my broker app. And then Sharpen, which currency are you sending it to? I'll keep it in USD. Perfect, well Sharpen, how much do you wanna send? Uh, I think I'm gonna send $200. And click send, beautiful. So now my Insta Crypto balance has gone down to 54. If I open up the broker app, my balance that was 300 will no longer be such. Go back to the wallet page, scroll over to USD, and I got $500, right? Because I just deposited 300, 200. Now, Everything I just showed you right now is only because I wanted to do a trade and I had some money sitting somewhere else. And I, you know, it's not mandatory to do what I just did right now. If you already had the funds sitting on broker app, but I just showed you how simply and how kind of effortless, effortlessly I was able to just move money and participate in what I need to do to accomplish this. Excuse me. Sorry about that. So now I have enough funds. I can go buy my license. So I'm going to go back to earn. I'm going to click brands, right? Let me show you how I did that again. Brands is the second tab right here. Click brands. Click the brand that I'm trying to follow, which is Global Exchange, and click follow. And immediately, you don't even have to scroll through anything. Monthly, broker app prime, $400, or as I always like to say, $399. And then on a monthly basis, it's $99. First month is $400 until October, sorry, November 10th for people that register until the first, before the first, forgive me. And then I So I'm going to click subscribe. And as soon as I click subscribe, it's going to say, well, which of your assets are you using to pay short time? I'm going to pick those. Sorry, sir, Ben, just to clarify, uh, the 400 is really the 300 plus the 99 combo. So if somebody already paid 99, there is a couple out there, they would need yeah. a $100 button. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll reimburse them. No problem. No, it's not the dollar. It? No, I'm saying if somebody already paid the 99. No, I understand that. Yeah, I'll just reimburse them. Uh, okay, that could be. Yeah, anyways, that's, that's an issue. I mean, wait, are you saying you want me to just allow them to pay 300? Well, if he has a 99, then he pays the Yeah, it'd be easy. It'd be much more simple for me to credit the $99 and then just pay check out again, like what I'm doing right now. Okay. Um, so for the next month, we could do the 99 and then the 400 instead of 300. Sure. So n now um, I'll be able to click for and even though I have a license, my purchase is successful, my new license is issued. At the top, you can see now I'm Broker App Prime, which is great. Um, and that's it. As soon as I unlock that license, if I click on this middle button, you see this middle button right here, this big B button, it's allowing me to do my money making extravaganzas, right? So since I followed Global Exchange, the product I just followed is for me to be able to set my own exchange rates on all of Global Exchange's products. Had I, in the future, if I have more brands that I've followed, they would all be there. Like this is Global Exchange and they'll be the next brands I follow. But the broker app Prime essentially is giving you access to being able to override every transaction on the broker app irrespective of brands. So I was able to do that. So now let me set some of my fees. So say I set, so there's two and so lots of transactions I could set, make money off of, but let me just do Fiat to Crypto. Click Fiat to Crypto and click, you know, more popular one, which is USD. So Bitcoin USD, right now I've set it for 3% fee. We're just gonna click that and it's showing you all the data. So it's showing you the market price with the, so it's showing the market price without the broker fees is 13,766 USD. Then my 3% is $412, right? I'm gonna make, and then my client sees 14,179, that's all they know. To be honest, they don't even see that because unless they're typing in, I wanna buy one Bitcoin, which is un really improbable, they're not gonna see that. They just gonna, when, you, when I went to bought, when I traded my Ethereum for USD, you didn't even, I didn't even get an opportunity to see it. Just kind of walk me through it. There were quotes and things like that, but the user's really not even engaging a lot of that. So if I wanna change my fees, which I can now as being a, bro a prime broker, I just click change fees. Let me show you what that is right there. Change your fees, change your fees, click on that. And whatever my new fees are, uh, let's say I wanna make it 5%, confirm change of fees. And immediately, um, it's not fees updated. And as you can see, it's now 5% right there. So now everybody that's in my network direct, and how can I see that? Go back to the network page, right? So all 33 of these people, because those are my directs, when they go and try to do USD BTC, they're now paying 5% coming straight to me. Where can I see that? All I need to do is go to the last page 
of my earn section. And up here, I can see all my earnings, right? We call it profile. So I can see my latest transactions. I think this is Alan's first time seeing some of this too, which is cool. Um, let me turn off the block check for now. Turn that off. So immediate earnings can all be visualized. I go to earn, last page. So here I have my affiliate balance, which is how much I've made. Um, I could do further analysis of my transactions, or I could just see my latest transactions right here from OTC or from, you know, if I'm a direct broker from my broker chain. So I can see all the different types of comp structures and select and see, visualize everything in that function. I could search the transactions. And I, as you can see, this Happy Meals and Fries character did a trade and I made 77 cents, $1.13, $3.49. These were all my commissions that have contributed to that. And these are just trades being placed. Obviously, this is not even like a real account. I'm just using this for demo purposes. Like some of the brokers that we have already, um, let's just say their, their list would be very long here. This is just off of the transactional revenue. If you wanted to go in deep and look at how indirect transact, it's, it's insane. But this, this last page right here allows you to visualize everything in a really efficient fashion. So that's in a nutshell, the most condensed version of what you can do. Sign up deposit money, purchase the license, set your fees, get people to get started um, in one of the apps, probably Instant Crypto, whatever. It could be the broker app, it could be anything. And now you're overriding all of their transactions, as well as, of course, overriding their uh, subscriptions if they get started as a broker. And I can view my commissions there. If I want to withdraw my commissions, I just click withdraw. And I can withdraw them directly to my wallet. And from my wallet, I can send them out. So... There is what I just showed you right now would be like me taking, I don't know, the the latest MacBook or whatever iPhone, which one iPhone 13 just came out, or iPhone 12, or iPhone 12 just came out, and showing you how to take a picture or something, something that is obviously very cool but rudimentary, and there's nothing that takes a better picture than an iPhone. I really have to spouse. What I just showed you is the most effective, most lethal way to be your own exchange without literally doing any of the hard work. And what you were, what you're able to see already kind of come to fruition is the fact that you're sitting back in the silo of your broker app, putting things into place. It's manifesting itself over Insta Crypto, Assets.io, these different applications that your users may or may not have interest in. And you're now able to navigate and manage everything from one place. And that's just one brand in that capacity. All right, Al, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go from there? Because I think that is the most succinct explanation of top to bottom. That, that's uh, that's the base of everyone wants to get themselves in and get in at the, the lower rate. Um, now you can go back to your regular scheduled program. Okay, Maybe what's my regular scheduled schedule. programming? Well, Maravik saw she saw some of the stuff today and she was pretty impressed. So, I'm oh wow, Maravik! I'm always trying to impress Maravik on the low though. That's actually like a real thing. That's a real thing. Um, well, um, so but I don't know what it was because we have a chance to talk. So I just yeah. seeing some new what, stuff. I guess well, I mean, if you, uh, Alan, if if you feel that what I've shown so far has sufficient because the reason the one thing i'm not showing is how to sign someone up because we spent so much time on the last call going over that in all fashions sending someone the invite over to sms uh sending registering them i think i think we covered that in as much detail as anybody could and showing them all the tools to get that done so now today i went into detail about how to be able to procure your license and set your fees and then see your basic commission structure obviously there's way more analytics that they can use here so if you feel that i've sufficiently covered the meat and potatoes, although potatoes probably aren't a good part of your meal, but your the meat and potatoes, um, uh, I can go into the sizzle because I have a lot of it, but I just want to make sure I've covered all the stuff that people have been itching for. All right, Rick, I just put you on, uh, allowed to, you know, you can unmute yourself here and just say, is there any one or two things you'd like Sherpan to, to cover or that you like our impressor as you'd like him to show? Well, I just checked assets.io today and basically I was also like, oops, um, it's new. Oops, there's a new one again. So I kind of like, wow, that's good. And of course, while I'm learning what's new and working on the uh, sites, I yeah. actually go through with one of the um, users or customer that we have. And yeah. he him personally was so impressed, which is I send you guys, you know, his uh, well, comments. It, so. Appreciate it. Through a lot. I think not even 10% what I've showed it to him and he's already impressed. So I yeah. personally can't wait to pick everything that I can go through with it. So hopefully I could learn every, you know, single things in that site. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, Asset.io is a monster. So, I mean, if we're getting into that, then we're going to be here all night. I, however, I have something that is 
probably the most important thing for Alan, in my opinion, like something that he would find really interesting. And I think all the users would appreciate it. Okay. So I'm going to go into that right now. And if all, if this state of the union, because I obviously I'm backlogged because we've never had a state of the union. So I have like a million things to say and a million things to show you guys, but I don't want to be ridiculous and just throw a bunch of new things at you. I want to be practical. So I'm glad that we got through the main stuff. Now, let me tell you about one of the features that we've worked on. That's an Insta Crypto. It's in the broker app. It's in assets.io. It's actually all of the agencies as well, but you don't even want to worry about that. It's in both of your apps, Insta Crypto and assets.io. So what is it? It's so Alan's and Mervic working with them has been such a pleasure because they are so focused on making sure you know, users are like treated with the level of respect that they deserve. And what I mean by that is like, they are empathetic to the journey that a new user will go on. Like Alan is always telling me, uh, you can't expect them to know this or you can't expect them to have to do this. And, and you know, it's frustrating because you obviously at some point you're like, okay, what, what are they going to do, man? Like they're not, they, you know, but he's, he's more or, more or less always right about the fact that the more your user, and as a broker, you're also, you should be concerned about this. It's like, okay, these applications that users are using to accomplish their financial goals, the complexity of them is great like what Maravik said, because that's what makes it like so feature rich, right? Like a, like a Tesla or something like think about how many things a Tesla can do. But if you did, weren't able to get in, start the car, drive it, experience it, then the fact that it could do an obscurely advanced feature is not meaningful. So what's the bridge there when it comes to crypto applications, considering we're talking about a broad swap, but also because even just an Insta crypto and broker app, the degree to which you can accomplish things are exceptional. Um, the, the gap there is really support. And obviously, this is something that we talk about a lot. Um, to give you guys some context, just because I think it's important for you to reference the journey a little bit. When we first started GX, particularly when we first started GX Broker, which was May of last year, I had this idea that every broker that signed up, I was going to create a support WhatsApp chat for them. So I gotta think about that for one second, right? That's like a company saying, like the founder of a company saying like, you know, so every time someone signs up an affiliate, we're going to create a unique WhatsApp chat with them and the founders, the upline and that person. And we did it. I, I cannot lie about this. I have hundreds, I mean, that, what makes sense? at least 3000 WhatsApp messages in groups with brokers of all the people that signed up each individually, you know, talking to them about their businesses, talking to them about how, you know, their global exchange should help them. And they've already signed up and paid. And now literally they're able to yell at us at the palm of their hands. Everybody thought that was a ridiculous idea as it was mainly not because of the proposition. Cause I just thought that if you could get, if the broker or the customer could yell at you in milliseconds, you're actually going to be closer to your goal. That's what I was thought. And the further along you make them, like if you create more distance between in the, you and the field like that, you're just going to have a slower response time to being able to improve your product. Um, so I don't think that my proposition was crazy. I just thought that the fact that WhatsApp didn't like, give you any business tools to streamline that was kind of crazy, which is fair. Uh, so what we did after realizing that there was, there was some success in that formula, but it was just not scalable because WhatsApp's developer tools are pretty bad. We created our own chat and we put that chat in, we've put that chat now in every single application. So even if you're using the broker app and you just signed up as a free user, you're able to click right here, hamburger menu, set up on a wallet, click support. And immediately on the second column here, you click chat. And you have your direct support chat built in directly with the company, with the support team. And you can say, hey, your platform is amazing. Or you can say, hey, your platform sucks. Just giving two, two different start campaigns here. Not only can you talk directly to the support and then them talk back to you, you can send pictures, videos of the issues that you're suffering with, which I know one person I think on your team did, which is really great. Um, and you can do that from your phone, from your app. What does this mean? This means now that there is no latency between problems suffered by the newest person. So the thing that we came across when we did the WhatsApp stuff was that it would always trickle up. Like it would be like, like typically in a, in a, like an affiliate marketing company, what happens is that like, so the company has something it can improve on, but of course, at the management level, they don't see it because they're just worried about too many different things. They can't see it. Some, every new person who's at the time they signed up pretty meaningless to the company because they haven't done anything yet sees it. So, but the new people don't have leverage. They don't have leverage to say something yet, right? So what they usually do is they'll tell their upline who tells their upline who tells their upline who gets it to someone who has leverage. And then that person brings it to the percent, the perception of the company. 
So we wanted to cut that out to the best of our ability. At least, at least we wanted to help the brands on the program cut that out. And so now our goal and what I implore everybody to do, this is not the perfect solution because we still need to continue to enhance our support team, enhance our automation software, enhance our, um, you know, the intake because the amount of messages we get is insane because it's not just one app, right? But what I want is that I want to make it so that the moment someone signs up and has not done anything yet, but has a suggestion, has a complaint, has something to talk about, they don't need to talk to the upline or anybody anybody else. They can yell directly at us. Or I guess use the word yell as a, as, an, a, as a hyperbole. They could be very nice as well. Most people are very nice, to be fair. Nobody's really yelling that much, but I'm just giving it as an example. They can share ideas with us. They can share you know, issues, concerns with us in the palm of their hands. And they can use, they can convey pictures, messages, files, contracts, whatever can be done through the chat. So that's in not just broker app, but when you go into your Insta crypto app, it's the same chat. It's not even a different chat. Your messages are carried over. So that's a continuity there. So click support. And what do you see? Go to the second, second page chats. And now this support chat that you're looking at in Insta Crypto is what every single Insta Crypto customer gets. Like the people that sign up just to buy $2 worth of Bitcoin or whatever. Now think about it. You're a broker. You get someone started at Insta Crypto. They're under you. They don't really know. They don't really care too much because they're not being a broker yet. They're just trying to buy crypto. They can literally access support 24-7. They can talk to us 24-7. We're not going to respond 24-7 yet, but that's our goal. They can... Um, Speak to the, as soon as they sign up, you don't have to train. You don't have to do almost anything because there is no latency between the newest person and the company. I, my goal, my objective, and my hope is that you guys use this because I don't care if you buy anything, to be honest. I really don't. It's, we're too entrenched at this point. We're selling air to a suffocating world. Uh, so I'm not concerned about people buying things. I'm really concerned about your ideas, your opinions, because we're in such a, we're such a dynamic growth phase. My goal is that you just use the chats. Tell us everything. Tell us what you hate, what you like. If you don't, if we don't respond, I apologize. We will get around to it. Um, but this, no company has done this. First of all, no crypto company would ever do it because it's not, it's not economically feasible for them to do it. Why in God's name would they want to hear every complaint? Um, even if you take it into the MLM world, I mean, of course it's not in the MLM world. The MLM world, they still use like email tickets from like, you know, 2002. Um, this is meant, I mean, no offense, right? But you think with all the money, they can just upgrade. But anywho, um, uh, this is crypto support, like no financial support, like nobody's ever seen. Like what's the support apparatus you get at your bank? Uh, when you have a question and it's 2.30 in the morning, what can you do with your bank? Wait until the morning, I hope, if they, if they open. I heard that banks are not open properly during COVID in Canada. Is that the case? I was that yesterday or something like that. I was like, no way. So before they were only working like eight to five and now they're not even working eight to five. Oh my God. Um, uh, the, and you know, this is obviously a step in that direction. Now, Maravik, I need to hear your voice. Uh oh. She disappeared. One sec. Okay. Well, I guess I can't hear her voice. Alan, I need to hear your voice. Yeah, I'm here, wherever it's here. Yeah. All right, so I just explained something that you two had already known about, right? You knew that there were the support chats built into the app, right? Yes. So the field had no idea about that. Like, this is the first time. Even my old users, my old brokers, they've never heard about what I just said. So this is already a gargantuan step when I release this on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to show you guys something that you two don't even know about. Okay, okay. ready for it? Ready for it? Marvin. I clicked a lot of things earlier. Don't so click, don't click, don't click, don't click, don't click, don't click. There's a no, lot of fake news in the program. I'm joking, I'm joking. I so, really um, anyway, I want to see. All right. Do you see right now I'm on the second part of the support page? Second, which is chats, right? Yes. yes. Okay. The first one is called bots. So mm -hmm. bots, it's not 100% finished yet, but it's 90 something percent finished. Bots is the world's first cryptocurrency I call it AI assistant. To be honest, it's not that smart yet. So I would say maybe dumb intelligence assistant because we're working to make it intelligent, but it's quite interesting. So most of the time users, remember I'm in Insta Crypto right now. This is also on the broker app. This is also on Asset.io, but I'm in Insta Crypto. Meaning the guy that signs up for free Insta Crypto gets all of this. Your users, your users. Anyway, so I feel like when it comes to people signing up and learning about things, 
Nobody's trying to learn nothing. It's my opinion. Like when you sign up for a new platform, in order for you to really learn about that platform, that platform has to be incredible. I mean, that is like Facebook type of platform. I don't think we're at that level yet. I don't think we're that important. So we need to make it so that the users don't have to learn how to use it. Let me repeat what I just said. Alan believes, I believe, most people believe it's critical for your prospects, not, not your prospects, sorry, your customers, your brokers, your affiliates, whoever, your supporters, should know how to use your platform and so Sharpen or everybody, make it usable. Make it simple. Make it something people can actually get their head around. Don't make it Morris code. Don't make it horrible. These are good suggestions. How about we don't do that? How about we make it the most advanced, complex, and feature-rich machine on the world? And then we tell everybody, you can learn how to use it, or you can just talk to it using the bots. Not literally talk right now, the voice recognition thing I'm working on, but type it. When you click bots, you have a couple options at the top. You have transactions, you have transact, and you have learn. Do you see that, Marvik? At the top right here. Transactions, transact. Those are the three first things I've put into the bots. Transactions is a way for you to pull up any transaction you've ever done. It's like a receipt generator so that you don't have to go find it. So when you click transactions, it's going to ask you, well, what type of transaction are you looking for or looking for? I'm looking for a withdrawal that I did. So I'm going to click Ascend Transaction. And now it's populated all of the withdrawals that I've done immediately. And then I can say, wait a minute, I don't see it. Okay, no worries. I click that. And then it's going to say, all right, no worries, boss. What currency was it in? All right, cool. I have 26 withdrawals in Bitcoin, eight in Ethereum, five in CAD. I'll go with my Bitcoin ones. Now it's only showing me the Bitcoin. Oh, I found it. Perfect. Now I click it. And it's giving me a summary of the withdrawal. And then the last part, which I think they didn't put in there but tomorrow, you can click dispute. And when you click dispute, it messages the support. On behalf of you, it takes the transaction that you just, that the bot helped you find and sends it to support saying this customer is having an issue, deal with it. You don't need to learn about the transaction. You don't need to worry about explaining it. It all did that for you. So, that's just finding a withdrawal. You could find any transaction like that. Okay, well, what about transact? Well, the next, so learn, I think, is the one that they did. Yeah. So the next two that they're doing, I can show you my computer. I think Asset Studio probably has it done, is transact and learn. Transact will allow your users to not have to learn how to do transactions, but just tell the bot to do it for them. And learn is, well, learn is this. So learn is... You saw learn when I clicked learn when I went to. It's a library of videos organized about the application so that you can learn how to use it yourself if you want to. So right now I haven't populated the playlist. I'll be doing that today or tomorrow, but I'll show you how it works. Say when you come to your search a category, say how to trade, click it. It's going to give you all the videos and articles related to that articles, videos. And then here we go. I'll click this video and now it's giving me the video and I can watch it directly there. Yeah, there's only a popular there, but that's how we'll be able to do it. And so now all of your platform's features, every single minutia of a feature, every single content, educational content, not just about crypto, I mean, not just about the app, but about crypto and about the markets are built in. Not only is it there for your user to find, but the bot can get them there. So that's what we're working on now, which is, I think, the ultimate bridge because there's this we're on this like insane trajectory where there the amount of features and the machine that is in your pockets when we're talking about broker up and instant crypto is just is like no other but we can't expect everybody to keep up with the evolution of the touring machine or something like that i think the support slash bot so the bots on the chat bridge the gap because if we had to stand here and wait for everybody to understand and learn we would not go anywhere and it would be a cruel uh, objection objectification of our customers so what we're trying to do is create the bots on the chat so that the newest person doesn't have to think about whoa this app has a lot of stuff to learn about no don't worry about that boss you come to the chat you tell us what you want don't worry about learning you come to the, and if you want to learn we will forward you to the particular video in the learn section that will teach you but most customers don't even want to learn that's great we'll do it for them Bot, the goal of the bot, which is not, the part of the bot that's not done yet, is auto execution of transactions. So you'll be able to open the bot and just tell it, hey, I want to trade Bitcoin, get, get me the best price, and it'll go and do it for you. You could do that right now by just going to the feeds page and doing it. 
So my point, it was built to be the simplest app in the world, the most advanced app in the world. And now it will be structured in this, in on um, this, uh, what do you want to call them? Crypto. I want to think of some cool names from, like Siri is a cool name for what I, Apple did. I don't know what mine will be yet, but this is the ultimate support infrastructure. There is, will be no need for any support after I'm done with all of this. My goal is to eradicate the latency between new user and ultimate execution. Someone asked when the Android version will be. I uploaded a video right before I got on this call and the video is on YouTube and I can send it over. Mervic, if you can put it in the Zoom chat, it's showing the latest Android link, how to download it for Android and how to auto update. Oh, great feature I need to talk about. Please, ladies and gentlemen, not, if you don't have the updated version on, on any given day, you will not, some of the things won't work, but I've already built into the app the way to update it. So say I have an instant crypto or broker app, it's same thing for both. And I just want to make sure I have the updated version. All I need to do is click this button right here to that top right hand corner. And I can see where it says app updates. Click that and then click Android because I'm on an Android and it's going to give me every single update. And just in case, always just install the latest version, 29th. What is that? Click it and it'll take you to the download page. Some of you might have an app version that's so old it doesn't even have the app updates page. But as soon as you get like today's version, it'll have the app updates page, meaning you'll never have to ask for the update again. It'll be there. So, yeah, that's just one little thing. Bots, chats, you know, a couple things are working on. Okay, uh, while you're there, um, that was great to answer that question. He just put it on board, but I actually have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, I want to start with, uh, I want to start with this one. It's, I think it's just a glitch, but we're really not sure. Uh, we have a gentleman on the call here, Tracy Emmerich, and he has been struggling with this. For whatever reason, his email is not being received. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I think it's because, this is my best opinion, but, and you probably correct me, but I think it's because it's one of those obscure, email addresses that doesn't seem to work in the system. It's not a, it's not a Gmail or something like that. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very annoying problem when a customer faces that. I can understand that. All I can do is apologize, but to be completely honest, um, there's nothing we can do beyond asking them to use a different email if they have tried several times. Now, I can sit with them and make sure they tried effectively, administratively. We could go through that, and they could do that. I was going to say they could do that in chat, but without an account, they can't do that. But um, we could try it one more time with me, but you're right, Helen. There are just some emails that it doesn't pick up. And yeah, I think it's for, for, to be honest, like let me be very clear on this. We're not using even our own email server. Like We're using AWS, just Amazon Web Services email server. So um, it's... If it, you know, I wish that I could give more clarity on that. Apart from the fact that it's genuinely usually because the 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 email client that they're using could be like let's say Yahoo or something like that is is just pushing it to spam, is pushing it to promotions. That's one thing I've seen. Sometimes it just doesn't pick up. There could be an MX records problem. I mean, these are all just like email nomenclatures. It doesn't really matter. I would always just say use a Gmail. I understand that's mad abrasive as the customer to use a specific type of email, but I don't know until I, I would have to make it a priority to like migrate to our own email server, which in all honesty right now is probably not going to happen. So I'd like to give a nicer answer to that, except the best thing I could do is sit there with the gentleman or the, or the, or the lady and, and try to do it once myself. But beyond that, that'd be a new email. Well, uh, it wouldn't be worth sharing it with everybody, but it's just good to have an answer because it's been very frustrating between us to try and figure out how and why it wasn't working. I have to yeah, I mean, well, like, put it like this. Put Say out of every 100 people you sign up, one of them is going to be like that. If I was to be frank, I apologize if, I, if I'm catching anybody and I'm being sounding a little facetious. I'm really not. I really do empathize with the circumstance. But I would just say it's like this. Like, if you, we're talking about a massive amount of signups, and, like, some of my brokers are doing that. So you're, if you're doing a digital marketing campaign or something like that and you have 500 people trying to sign up, yeah, three of, the, two, three of them are just going to get faulty on the email. And really, you can't troubleshoot that. It's not worth it. All right, well, maybe we can connect with them after the meeting if you could. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. I'm st I will extend every power in our capacity to do it. I'm, I'm saying for, like, I'm not speaking to this client or what he's gone through. I'm speaking to the, the next kind of wave of yeah. prospects. Yeah, I'm saying, like, yeah, I mean, what what can we, like, imagine you're a broker and you message us on the support chat, hey, my customer trust somebody doesn't get email. What can we do? Like, logically, right? I understand that people think that there's a solution to everything. There is, but... There's also the requirements like, yo, you might just want to try a different email. Like that might be an easier solution. So, um, cause it's the, I, it's just one of those annoying external things to be honest. Yeah, I don't know how you do. It's not a glitch. No, I mean, I, no, I mean, I, 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 I apologize. I just can't let you say that. Like it's not a glitch. Like that's not a glitch. That is 
to email clients that don't, it, it's, the, it's not only our application that suffers with that. Like I signed up for apps using obscure company emails that I'm on that I don't get it. It's just like that. And I so, yeah, again, it's not diagnosable. Like from like okay. from a user's perspective, first of all, this is this is the worst, right? What if they're using something like a Yahoo, right? And they are not getting the code from us, but they're getting other emails. They're just gonna lose their fucking minds. Excuse my language. They're just gonna lose their minds, and rightfully so. But I really, at that point, think, just think about what we can do. Like we could contact Google. We could we use Google for MX and Amazon, and we could try to troubleshoot it. But they're you know. It's, it's going to be one of those things which is like, you know, picking so up nickels in front of a bulldozer. Be, um, either a spare email or this one, what is it called? It's Telus. Yeah, it's Telus. It's net. I mean, I'm, I'm not here to disparage his email. I don't really so care to do that. that, like, that uh, Google doesn't like Telus? If I if it was that, I wouldn't even know, right? If all I know is that it's a black box, it's like you're not, if you, you know, it's like talking to a telecommunications company. Like if a phone call doesn't go through, you're not going to really call your phone provider. Like, why didn't this phone call go through? You're going to try something else. So I'm going to, I'm going to say, you know, it's, I'm not speaking to the end user. I would never say what I'm saying right now to the end user, to be honest. Like, uh, he I'm, is I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I, I've already hopefully created an exception that I'll take care of him, you know, individually, but I'm saying to the end user, what the message I'm giving right now is not appropriate. I'm speaking to the brokers because I'm, I mean, this is a state of the union for brokers. Yeah, when you're a broker and you have to sign up several people and one of them have to go through this, like this is not a transactional issue. This is not something that's like a crypto issue. This is not a site. This is like something, it's an email. Like it's an email issue. You know what I mean? Like it's, we, we can do several retries and we can show you the retries, but beyond that at some point. Okay. No problem. I, just, I, I mean, I'd also just say it's like this and I'm, this is horrible customer service advice I'm giving right now. So I can come appreciate that. But I'm just saying this, it's like, What's the what's the friction of getting a Gmail account? Right? It's like that's what I would say. The friction of getting a Gmail account is less than this conversation that we just had. Yeah, and although yeah, I understand yeah. that you can't, and a lot of times asking your customer to do that is just a big insult. I get it, but when you're talking about needing to sign up as many people as our brokers are signing up, especially through a digital medium, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Maverick here has a question. Um, I have to read her writing. She might be a little bit difficult. Uh, she she wants to be able to pay by USD because the option is crypto or fiat. Um, can she pay by USD? I'm not sure what she means. I just she, paid by USD. So like I said, I'm not sure what she means. I'm not sure what she yeah. would take off right when I'm getting her question. I, my demo was in USD. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I'll just put her question on hold for a sec. Sure. Um, so I have uh, two other questions here, actually a few others. Uh, that have come in from a few people. Let me just see if I can bring it up here, something interesting. Uh, so this is uh, some questions from uh, Richard. Yeah. Uh, he wants to know how to update our profile on the broker app and he believes that we should put in a, uh, need to put in a disclaimer, which is probably not a bad idea. Yeah, it's probably a great idea. <laughs> but so I believe Richard has Maybe the only person on planet Earth that has ac has access our broker web app, which nobody was supposed to access. I could be wrong about that, but I feel like that's the case. Mervic has also accessed it, which is just so bad. Um, uh, it wasn't ready to go, is what you're saying? No, it wasn't. Nobody knows about it. What do you mean it wasn't ready to go? It's not like I talked about it. Nobody knows about it. The only person that would have known about it is someone who went to brokerapp.io's front-facing website and then clicked login, finding it on the menu, and then was smart enough to log in with their credentials, and now they're in. And it's usable. It's actually usable. You can actually see all your commissions. It's quite functional, but I just... That's a huge project that I'm not, I'm, with the fact that we've invested so much money into the mobile first experience, the web application, which in my opinion is already better than most other companies, but it's just not comparable to the mobile app. I mean, this mobile app is like a nuclear bomb in your hand. So, I mean, I'm just, we're focusing on that. There, so the reason I bring that up is because in the broker web app, there's a very, very big section allocated to your profile as a broker, like almost like a Facebook page where you can talk about your testimonials and the clients that you serve. So it makes sense to me that Richard would ask that question, but in the mobile app, that's not there yet. So um, you're, you're, you're suggesting that maybe you've got a couple of serious storages going on here. I mean, it's like, you know, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree since Maravik is clicking everything. I suspect that her customers are doing the same. Uh, it's a good thing. Hey, I'm, I'm flattered. I'm, I'm, I get, and it's a very, like, obviously, the, so let me just show you one thing practically. If you want to update things like your profile picture, you just click the menu and then you click the profile picture. Just click this profile picture and you'll be taken to this page where you can change your profile picture. You can turn on and off block check and you can change your password and soon you'll be able to enable 2FA. So there's basic settings like that, right? Um, 
then there will be a page. Uh, I mean, there's going to be a huge section coming to your profile. I mean, a colossal element of the broker app is the socialization where you can meet other cus you can meet other brokers. Like, for example, like when you look at your downline on the earns page, like I've shown people this, right? Like you look at your network and then say you click on level one and then you click on people after you see your statistics for level one. Let's say you click on people. Um, it is going to show you every single broker, right? And I, this, like, for example, see, this person has made a profile picture. So you want to update your profile. You want to keep it. If, if you're not, you're either going to be one of three people. You're either going to be this girl that I picked as a nomenclature. You're going to be Jeff Bezos, not Jeff Smith, Jeff Bezos, or Drake. So those are the three people you'll be if you don't update your profile picture. So please do. Um, and that when you click on this person, the objective is obviously introduce you to the business connections and the business prospects that you have already. Those are all real people. They just haven't updated the profile picture. And so, yes, there'll be a huge element of being able to create your brokerage profile. Um, Richard probably has more information than other people do because he's seen the web app, but um, yeah, it'll be coming soon to the mobile app. Hey, so uh, Richard's actually looking to put a new pin. I think that's why he was asking you in there. Uh, new pin meaning what? Um, I'm not sure. I'm just reading what he said. Like a new, uh, new code, like a new ID, like a broker, yeah, like a broker sync code. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you want, if you want to change your, like your, basically your broker code that you send to people if, if they're signing up, if they're signing up by themselves, remember you can always send them up too. That you can do in your app. So what you do is you, we call it the broker sync code, like your username. So you go up here to the hamburger menu, and then you click broker sync right under your balance. My balance is 532, right? Right under that says broker sync. So you click that. And then here you can click on, uh, oh yeah, right at the bottom. It says configure broker sync. And when you click that, you can update your new code. So right now mine's a sharpen123. I can make it sharpen loves pizza and it'll become sharpen loves pizza. That's my new affiliate link. That's my new broker sync code. That's my new username. Cool. Okay. That answers, uh, Jack's question as well. Okay. So I do have, uh, two questions here. Uh, sorry, other questions here. Let me just try to get some. Um, that was kind of right. So, oh, I see. He said he didn't know he needed a broker app pin, and he's asking if he can send him a new broker app pin. Does that mean he wants a pin from his sponsor? I'm not sure. Or no, you... I don't. I mean, yeah, no, he doesn't need. He does, there's no concept of needing a pin. So, yeah, I think Marvik is send a video in the chat or something like some some chest message, and it doesn't entail the Android link. I don't know. I'm just kind of picking that up from the messages that I can see. Hey, if that uh, is the case. Will, will we have our own wallet? Obviously. Yeah, I mean, you we'll already have your own wallet. Yeah, it's already there. For both, for all of that. How to create blockchain, a block check, and what is block check? So he wants. Whoa, 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 whoa! Who's, who's asked that question? No, who asked that question? That's Richard. He wants a block check. Oh my God. <laughs> Yo, that's that's amazing. Um, wow. Uh, what is block check? I haven't made that announcement yet. It's already done. Block check and what is it? Um, well, block checks just really to track the money and the movement. Of well, the yeah, money. Right, 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 right. please, 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 please. Oh, I got this one. Um, mainly because I'm 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 gearing up to do a pretty sizable uh, press release for block check itself. So that's kind of why I'm hesitant. But since you guys are asking, I'm just going to use this opportunity to uh, to uh, the to go. You guys explain. I guess announce block check. It's a huge selling proposition for brokers. To be able to, it's a huge feature that you can offer your clients. Um, so I, I bought a company called Blockcheck that was like doing absolutely nothing. Uh, you can go look at it. It's called, you find it online as well. It's actually web based. So if I go here, you can see my computer and my mount and my, uh, my phone, I guess. Uh, but my phone's like hogging up all the attention, it seems. Yeah. So you can go to blockcheck.io and, uh, really Blockcheck is a open, uh, peer-to-peer -peer network that aims to create transparency and a level of efficiency for off-platform transactions. So what I mean by that, let me put that in small, like regular terms. Anything that's GX to GX is really fast, instant. It's not fast, it's instant and it's free and it's almost E easily reversible, fixable. What I mean by that is you're sending to another, if you're sending money between your own vaults, if you're making trades, if you're sending money to another GX user on another GX app, all of that's fine. Um, if you're doing everything on Binance, it's equivalently that way. You're, you know, you're using all Binance stuff. It's great. The moment issues happen is obviously when you're doing external transactions, external withdrawals between platforms, you know, that's when you have to have pretty sophisticated kind of context. So Blockcheck is aiming to, and the only, the things that there are today are like blockchain.com and Etherscan, which are like hash trackers for the blockchain network. That's not what Blockcheck is. Blockcheck is trying to create a 
universal standard for being able to send crypto anywhere. And that sounds funny, right? Because the whole point of crypto is you can already send it anywhere. Although that's technically true, it's not practically true. Because in order to be able to send crypto anywhere, you need to have serious understanding. And everyone on this call might take that understanding for for granted because you guys are already in the industry. But uh, just go to someone and say cryptocurrency address and you'll, they'll look at you like you're there from Mars, like you're from Mars. And rightfully so, because what the hell is an address? Why would you have an address for a coin? Right. Like just logically, when think of it doesn't make too much sense. Right. So we block check aims to essentially streamline all of that. And what it does is it allows you to essentially create these transactions that you can create tracking mechanisms for when you're sending it abroad, abroad, meaning like out of the platform. The largest play here is that you can create, you can send money to someone without knowing their address. So you can send money to any person without knowing their address. Not on, I'm talking outside of global exchange. And you can send it to them without knowing what currency they want. In other words, you can send off a cryptocurrency transaction from your Insta crypto account in Bitcoin to your friend. You don't need to know their address and you don't even need to know that they want Bitcoin. It's the check will be written in a way that they can cash it. That's why it says checks to cash. And they select at the point of cashing the check where they want to send it, which one of their addresses, which you don't need to know, you don't need to copy, you don't need to learn. And they can choose to cash that check, not in Bitcoin, but in Ethereum, in Dogecoin, in Libripple. That's like the ultimate privacy. Yeah, it's part, it's ultimate privacy, ultimate convenience, and it forces the user not to have to learn anything on both sides, right? And it creates mad efficiency. So that when you look at, by the way, if you want to know where my inspiration for blockchain came from, it's the regular check system. So American Express came up with the first traveler's check. It was about, I mean, people argue about when American Express or Wells Fargo came out with it. I think American Express came up from all the document, the docu series I watched at this point. Um, really the first traveler's check happened in the United States in the early 1800s. Amex wasn't called Amex at the time, but American Express believed that people were moving from, you know, for the first time, you know, actually after we experience industrialization from state to state for the first time, because that's just a crazy new concept that people would move even right from one state to another, let alone one country to another. And so the fact of the matter was that every state in the United States issued different currency. Uh, you know, until 1914, there was no central bank. So you're now talking, and most municipalities issued different currencies. So it would have been, you're traveling, you actually have no way to pay for anything. And so American Express said, well, we can create this traveler's check, which is an abstraction of money issued in your municipality in California, so that when you're in Arkansas, it'll work because Amex is recognized across the country. That's essentially their proposition. Okay, well, that sounds freakishly familiar to cryptocurrency today, does it not? It's like, um, Everybody using a different currency, and that's not going to slow down, by the way. If you think that there are too many cryptos now, it's not even 1%. I mean, people are just going to create millions of cryptos. There's no there's no two ways about that, right? So that's in complexity is going to increase. You expect people to learn all of that's madness. Number two, if every protocol is speaking a different language, and I'm not speaking from even from a programming perspective, because obviously at that level, they're speaking very different languages. But if they're speaking even different address types, different wallets, different this, that, and the other, do you expect people to transact like that would just... It would just be absolutely ridiculous. And so what BlockCheck is trying to do, if you think about what a check was when they first created, it was like, well, what is a check? Well, Alan, just click classic mode here and you can see all of these are already checks. It's a block check. Payable to the person in what currency? What's the notes? What's the password? What's the credentials? What's the block check number? And so what is block check? It's a way for you to send money anywhere in the world. Um, without needing to know anything about the end destination, except the fact that the end destination needs to know the password that you gave them. So let me do a live example. By the way, don't ever use a block check for another GX user. So people have been doing that. Like I've seen so many people do that. Don't do that. That's just like a waste of time. Block check is meant for non GX people. Um, uh, so the, uh, you can also just go to the website and create it, but like block check is also built into every GX app. So it's pretty cool. So say I want to create a block check cause I need to send money from my wallet here. I got some ether, right? No, I got no ether. Did I get some tether? No, I got no tether. This is sad. Bitcoin it is. Yeah, I got 30 dollars in Bitcoin. So yeah, perfect. I got 0. 0.0024 Bitcoin, so three zeros. And I need to send Alan money. Alan is not in GX, not interested. And he wants God knows what. I honestly don't care. I just know I need to send him money. So I create a block check and I put it in his name. How do I do that? Um, I click this. You see what I did? Top right hand corner. And I click block check. And the same thing comes here. All the block checks in the world come straight here. Checks that need to be signed and checks that need to be cashed if you wanted to see the block checks. Anyway, 
let's say you want to create one, which is what I want to do. I click create. Oh, taking me. To, oh, it's now taking me directly to the website to create it. Oh, I understand. I remember why I told him to do that. Um, give me a sec. I'll do the crypto. Oh, yeah. Just keep telling me to go to the website because you do it. Ideally, what we want is for people to do this in their in the website because it's like standardized. Oh, there we go. So there we go. I was able to do it. I just in order to. So that's a good point. I forgot. Let me tell people. Let me remind people of this. Do you see this annoying button? This block check button. Your okay. uh, your screen is kind of half covered. Your your um. Oh my God! You're right. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize. Okay. So okay. Let me let me let me go for quickly from the top. Okay. There's this annoying button that follows you around on Instacrypto and and block broker app right here. It's called the block check button. Okay. First and foremost, it was getting in people's way. So I created a way for you to hide it. So if you want to hide it, you can click your hamburger menu, and click the profile picture, and just turn off the block check shortcut. Okay. And now it's block check is turned off. Let's say you don't want to hide it because you need to send one or you need to track something. Just turn it back on. Now you can click the block check, click crypto and click send, or you could do what I said before, click block check here and click create. And now the block check creation, you're basically writing a check. So the safest way to send crypto across the world. All right. Well, how do you want to, first and foremost, how do you want to track this? I'm going to use phone number. So the question asking right now is, do you want to keep, do you want to get SMS notifications about the updates to your block check? I do. I do. I think that's a great idea. So I'm going to put in my phone number in the UK. Great. Okay. So now it's the interesting part. So I put in my notifications so that I'm going to get notified, but really who cares about me? It's a recipient that matters. Recipient's name. I'm going to put Alan. Again, I don't have to put his real name. I could write in, you know, Alan's whatever, but I'm just going to put Alan. Put in red and proceed. I mean, nobody's going to see it. It's all encrypted, but watch this. So now I'm going to put in the recipient's phone number. If I don't want to put in his number, I could use email, but I'm going to use number. Send me your number. Someone tell me, Alan or Maravich, if hit me with it. What's the what's the what's the country? Area code Canada states three sixty. States U.S. Okay, cool. So does it receive text? This number receives text, right? Yeah. Yeah, cool. United States. Okay, cool. What is it? Three six. Three sixty number one. Three sixty six eight six two three seven one. Three sixty. Six eight six two three seven one. That's the number. Yeah. Is that the number? Do I have it correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, proceed. So now it's asking me, well, what currency are you paying in? All right, well, I only have Bitcoin, so I'm going to use Bitcoin. Oh, no, I'm in Ethereum. Uh, yeah, I'll use my Ethereum. Perfect. I'll do point one. Okay, good. Click block check. Now I've just had a security question. All right, Alan. Your no. first name is, proceed, Friend. Jeff. Because for those of you that don't know, Alan's real birth name is Jeff Smith, and he later changed it so that it doesn't sound so innocuous. Um, Jeff it is. Proceed. And then I can send a message, whatever message I want to send with the blog trick. This one, this one, this is my payment for this year's Christmas party. I'll check your messages. Yeah, I got it. Want to share your screen? Came up. It's uh, what's it saying here? He just he just got an SMS again. I don't know nothing about this guy. I didn't need to know anything. He just got an SMS. And what does it say? You received a block check. This one's for the Christmas party, something like that. Uh, hey, Alan has requested a block check having received. Yep. And that along ID number. Perfect. So is there a URL? Uh, I think so. I yeah, I mean your your phone is not talking yeah. up. So yeah, so there's a URL. Uh, yeah. With every block check. So he got texted it immediately anywhere in the world. He clicks it. Then he has to put in the security answer. So he has to put in Jeff. And as soon as he puts in uh, Jeff, sure it then it? asks him, it then asks him, what currency do you want to cash out in? It doesn't even tell him what currency I sent the money in. It just says, hey, there's this much worth of money. Which there's currency? Spider running around on my phone here. What? Yeah, I know that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry, don't worry about that. Yeah, I got it, got it, got it. Yeah. So then, and then it says, okay, you want to cash out in Ripple? No problem. So put your Ripple address in. Puts in the Ripple address, transaction's done. He doesn't need to cash it. You can keep it for a later day. Every block check is stored. You can find it. Every block check has a unique ID. Um, yeah. So block check will be the way that every non, like non-platform crypto transaction happens. It recreates the check model and, for the digital world for cryptocurrency and fiat currency. And I think it will be, um, it has nothing really, it's not really an inherently global exchange thing. It's um, meant for every exchange can use. Well, can I just say this out loud in sort of language terms? Ah, uh, yeah, you can say that though. All right, so I go to BlockChack, I gotta pay somebody something, and I'm paying them in crypto. I'm not really paying in crypto, I'm just paying them. 
And you're, you're losing crypto. You're you're getting debited crypto, for example. That's right, I don't lose it. crypto, but he's going to get it however he needs to get it. So I sent him a hundred bucks, and he's in Japan, and he received a hundred bucks. And then it says, "How would you like to collect it? Do you want to collect it in yen, or do you want to collect it in uh, Bitcoin, or Ethereum? What do you want?" And so let's just say he responds, "Well, okay, yeah, I, I, I'm in Japan, and I'm not a crypto person yet, so uh, I'm, I would take it in yen." And um, I guess nobody would appreciate this if they've never done a crypto transaction before, but doing a crypto transaction right now is a miserable experience. So, yeah, this is like this is like re as revolutionary as the first traveler's check was for the cryptocurrency market. I haven't really talked about it yet because I haven't made my full announcement, but it's in every single app. Uh, brokers get paid every time someone does a block check. Right now, block checks are free. In the future, it will cost um, it'll be really like a dollar or two dollars to do a block check, and brokers get paid on that too. So, um, yeah. And, and e transfer is the dollar. Yeah, it's exactly. I mean, it's, it's all, if people from Canada, you'll recognize some of the similarities. Yeah. So, so in other words, I can go to somebody I want to, I can pay them basically instantly. And, they and you won't have to think about it. You won't have to ask them for anything. Like, just think about that. Like, right now in the crypto world, you have to know their address and you have to know how to send a cryptocurrency transaction to that address, right? In the fiat world, forget about it. You need to know everything about them. You need to know, like, you know, where they ate dinner last night, their Swift code, IBAN number, like everything, right? And even then, it's not probably unlikely that you know everything you need to for the bank to do it. Uh, of course, the fiat liquidation component of this is set to improve. Right now, that's not our focus. Right now, we just want to do any crypto out and to any crypto in. But um, the, of course, with Insta Crypto, the objective <laughs> is to, uh, to sorry, drop something. The objective is to make it so that people can cash out in crypto, um, uh, sorry, in fiat. Um, there's a couple of great comments. I think they're both good, although you might not take them both good. Um, of course I won't. One is, wow, love it. I've always bragged about e-transfer, and this is way bigger than e-transfer. That's coming from Eric. My comment is... <laughs> my, my comment is... Thank you, um, Thank you. As much as we joke back and forth at who's better looking, I know you've got the age I can't do, but um, I really think it would be better if you could pull the hat, because you, you disappear on that hat. All we see is the... Yeah, no, I, it's on purpose. I'm trying to I'm trying to go for that... Uh, yeah, I can take off my hat. That's cool. Well, people don't care. I'm having a bad hair day. That's actually why. And, like... Uh, when you wear um, a hat for any length of time, it's going to be a bad hair day. No, matter what. No, no man. And then you don't really have here to have a bad hair day with. Yeah, no, but I mean, I'm a, I'm a quite, I'm a very jovial, I'm a very jovial character, very, very friendly looking. So you, you so. are, you're not, you're not so bad. Don't, don't say no, that I'm, on the side between us is true. I was just playing. With you. I mean, we could be brothers. We could be brothers if, 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 if looks didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get, I'm getting the side of your, you've already got some. So I'm, I'm trying that's to true. That's very true. Yeah, and you're much taller than me. I mean, you're not much taller than me, but you've got probably a couple inches. Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you got? Six two, six one? Six two, yeah. Oh, not bad. Okay, so I got other point guard. <laughs> this block check. My block check's on on uh, hold, so it's still sort of on. Okay, let me just get bring Send up. Send me a screenshot of what you see, I'll I'll shoot it. Yeah, like I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a I just I just said like to be honest guys, like obviously block check is just one of the many features. Like block check just everything that we work on is to make the broker's life more competitive. Like when you go out tomorrow and block check is full is released, you're the only you can't you're already the only people making money off of these transactions. But now you basically can say to somebody, hey, are you doing a complex crypto transaction that needs escrow management? Are you doing transfers all over the world? Are you paying people? Great, we have something for you, and you're overriding all of that. Like, I mean, it's it's these are all innovations that are obviously revolutionary, but more than that, they're rev. They're like, ammunition. They're all ammunition for you. It's just PayPal, all ammunition. A PayPal uh, user's dream come true? Uh, you know, we got something for PayPal. PayPal just entered the crypto space. We got yeah, something yeah, for just Anyways, uh, next question here. This is from Bert, and Bert's got a lot of stuff. We're going to have one-on-one -on -one with him. He's got a lot of stuff. Really good. Let's talk, let's talk about it. Yeah, Bert, is, uh, he's been around for a long time. He's got a lot of good suggestions and ideas to move forward. Yeah. I don't think this question is really a question. I think this question is just a general idea, and I think you're going to answer uh, it and agree with everything. But um, one thing was the mention of the $400, but that's okay. We got that worked out. So the next thing is uh, training videos. I mean, you've got this little training video uh, for a growth graph, a three-minute one. I guess it's the crypto needs one, assets.io as an example. No, sorry, the training. Like, are you talking about training video on how to use the platform or like how to – Yeah, the, I think the that's the basics here. Yeah, no, I mean, I've built now the the platform, the, sorry, the interface for being able to, for me to publish videos directly into the app is there. So I've 
done that. Now we just upload the videos and it'll go straight into your app. No more YouTube links. I'm uploading them all to I'm uploading them all to YouTube because I still want to build up the YouTube channel, but you can learn everything in the app now. I've built the entire video. I've built the training modules. I've built the I built essentially a training software in all of the apps for people to be able to use. So that part's done. The hard part's done. I just need to push the videos into the app. Yeah, perfect. Uh, I have told about your thousand hours of videos, and it's just so much you want to go through. But uh, he did mention as far as these, you know, a small video, you know, slow process, and then the details on each page. Uh, you know, having uh, uh, on page help, which is exactly what you're describing, uh, is going to be helpful. Um, yeah, the yeah, yeah. the uh, language that you use, and I've said this to you before, man. You're talking grade, you're talking fifth year university, and some people are really at first first grade or even kindergarten. So to downplay the language is something that I think we all could say. I know it's hard for you to do that, and from your point of view, I get it. But um, it, we really need to try and do that. And that's where I may be able to help a bit more. Um, let's see, uh, process will help make it clearer sometimes. Yeah. Um, Feedback process, yeah. Yeah, feedback process, which we've discussed. Uh, we're trying to help transfer deposit Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. Um, a video on how to uh, transfer deposit uh, uh, crypto. So I guess just getting started. Um, let's see, transfer deposit uh, Bitcoin, uh, higher interest. Oh, to get into the higher interest. Um, oh, man. That would oh, be man. nice. A little, that these would are be all nice. Kind right? of like a little two minute, three minute go here. Yeah, now. actually, so, so one, 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 one piece of news, I guess, is good, good news here, is, uh, or important news, sorry, is that so assets.io is obviously our flagship platform for all uh, debt instruments, like investing, all of that, right? So there's an entire, entire application allocated for that. However, I have built the ability to see all of your liquid interest rates and withdraw them into your wallet, into both Insta Crypto and Broker App. So to do that, I have to just click again, top right hand corner to the plugins button right here. Same button I used to get to block check, same button I used to get to refresh, I mean app updates, plugins. He's got a good and question you, at the end here. What do you see this right here? Money markets. Yeah. You see that right there? Money markets, right? Click it. And then it gets you all of your GX apps, right? And says, all right, which one do you want to see your money markets in? So you could click into crypto, whichever one you're in. Okay. So I'll click that, and then it gives you your earning balances for liquid. This is not to do with the bonds. So the bonds, if you're making money in bonds, it's not here. This is simply, I've earned this money. I'll show you Bitcoin. So do you see that Bitcoin, 0 0.02 Bitcoin right here? I've earned that just for the little bit of Bitcoin I've left in my Insta Crypto wallet in liquid. You see the $30 or something I had in my Insta Crypto wallet? So I click it. If I click Bitcoin, it now shows me, or it should show me, uh, yeah, every single payment I've got. I get paid every day for every asset I have in every app, even if it's not locked up. If it's locked up, I'm getting higher rates. But it's all here now for every app. And if I wanted to withdraw this tiny bit of Bitcoin I have, just click withdraw earnings. And there's point. That's oh, actually not that small. Point zero zero one five. That's not bad. I'm going to withdraw that right now. Point uh, zero zero one. $13. Made an interest. I don't even know that I did that. I didn't have that much money sitting in history. Crypto is liquid. So you're earning money every day, and now you can see it in both Insta Crypto and in Broker App. You can see it, and you can see Insta Crypto's interest in Broker App, and you can see Broker App's. Come on, man, Alan. I'm not Jeff Smith, man. I'm Jeff Bezos. Remember that. Uh, Maverick has just uh, telling me today that she looked at her interest, and because it, the interest is, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the interest from the uh, staking or from your product being ISA a thousand dollars there, and you earn you know five bucks interest, whatever it is, that five bucks interest goes into your account, not into your staking. Your staking always stays at that thousand dollar level. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually never, you can never add to your state your contract once it's made. Yeah, it's not compound. Yeah, which means you're you're extracting all of your earnings every day. You're extracting so, it. The only one question I have when you show me at the top. But right I just now, want to be clear on something. I want to be clear because what I just said is a big deal. Right now, everybody that's using Insta Crypto and everybody that's using Broker App can access the interest they're making for all of the assets they're just holding on each of those apps. In other words, Alan, you sign someone up for Insta Crypto. It takes two seconds, right? Yeah. They have that. They then go and deposit using their crypto address, $1,000 worth of Bitcoin or whatever, $100 worth of Tether or $50 worth of Ripple, whatever. It doesn't, I don't, whatever, it doesn't matter. The next day they're earning, they've already earned one interest payment, which they can see by going to money markets. Come on, man. Who's who's doing stuff like this? Who's really who's really saying stuff like this? I know, I know. Listen, uh, one thing Eric pointed out in your uh, interest um, was that the you know what's really interesting though, right? Let me let me let me tease. Can I tease? You know what's really interesting though, right? Prime brokers are going to earn some commissions on that. 
Oh, no. we, can't, we can't talk about that right now. That's TBD. Oh, yeah. that's, T- that's really TBD. You saw those payments coming in every day for my Bitcoin? My upline would have earned something on that. Can't talk too much about that, but just know the prime broker is prime for a reason. Yeah. So at the top, it showed her, it showed some interest, but there was two numbers. One was like 20 bucks and change. And the other one was like decimal zero, zero, two, one or something. And I'm not, I wasn't sure. Probably, probably Bitcoin and, and the dollar value. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, so why was it 20 bucks though? Is that the interest? You no, know, man, it's like whatever the dollar, what, if it's Bitcoin was 0. if she's earned 0.0001 in Bitcoin, then it's just so showing the value of that in USD. Okay, so that, that would be interest uh, 20 bucks. Oh, I don't know what, I don't know what you're referring to. I'm just saying if there's two values like that, it's because they're just converted. No, basically what is um, not quite sure is like when I go on the top, it, of course it shows the value of USD and as well as the value of the BTC. So if I have the 0. 0.0021 and then the total there is uh, $25.71. So I kind of assume that's how it is because it's obviously when I total all the 0. 0.007 interest that I uh, accumulated daily, then that's yeah. what that's you said the Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so okay. every interest payment goes every like I mean every interest payment you get obviously goes into an earnings vault and your earnings vault has a cumulative balance until you withdraw from it. Like that's uh, what I just showed you. Hard to explain. The number at the top, I get the two are associated, but I didn't get one. Her interest was well over hundred dollars and there's only twenty bucks at the top, so I wasn't sure if the twenty bucks part was. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I'm just so, like, what is that number? Anyways, it doesn't matter. I've got two people with their hand up. Um Jack. let's see, Jack. Uh actually he's already unmuted. So Jack, you can uh I think you can say your question. Hey, sure can. I uh, just wanted to ask, uh, you're demoing uh, paying for the broker app earlier with a USD, yeah. and uh, you were at first about to pay with Bitcoin. Can you pay with Bitcoin, or do you have to have GX tokens? No, uh, so you definitely don't need to have GX tokens. Like, So let me explain that. It's a good question. Let's try it out, because you are supposed to be able to pay with any currency, but I'll do a test right now, because I know some, maybe it was yourself, someone's having issues with that. Nonetheless, you will be able to pay with any currency. And I'm almost positive you could pay with any currency right now. I will try it out just to show something. But there's a better question you asked, which is, do you have to pay with GX tokens? And that unlocks a little bit something I want to clarify. So let me just go to the earn and I click uh, brands, click global exchange, follow. Okay, great. So here it's saying that the cost of the license is some dollar amount and in USD, which means that the license is priced in dollars. And I built it so that you can you can get debited in any currency. It gets converted to dollars and it's credited in dollars to the brand. Okay. Similarly, there is going to be uh, there's a GXT version of that. Again, that is if you have GXT. Like you don't need to have GXT. Like that's just if you have it, you use that. But you will be able to pay in any currency and it'll automatically get converted to dollars. The only caveat I have with that is I know someone was having an issue with that, so I wanted to make sure that it worked before I demoed that. I'm It was built for such, but I never got a chance to test it before this call. But, for example, say it's in USD, but you don't have USD. When you click subscribe, you would be able to pick any of these currencies, and it should convert. Um, and it, it has in the past. I just need to do a double check. But So irrespective of what the license is priced in, you can pay in any currency. So that's the main point that I want to get across. I used USD to pay today because I knew that the license was priced in USD, so then I wouldn't have any risk of it, you know, just not working. Um, it works irrespective. And one of the things you could have picked up there was that I still didn't, I didn't have USD to begin with. I just traded it on InstaCrypto and brought it. But I'm, I've built this system in a way that it's supposed to do, like even if I had just the Ethereum here, I could have paid in Ethereum and it would have gotten, it would have been converted to USD during the transaction. I just didn't test that before this call, um, so I didn't want to try that okay, out, but I could okay. definitely, that is supposed that, to be the case. On that, sure, Ben. Uh, I hope that, that answers your question, Jack. It's meant so that you can pay in anything, irrespective of what the license is charging. Right, okay. So the uh, 250 uh, GX is for the $99, but you have 250 for the $400, which actually should be 300 plus 99. So if I already had the 99, it would be three. But if you click there, it says 250 GX, uh, even on the $400 one. Sorry, am I looking? I click the right thing. Uh, yeah. So here's one license, right? Four hundred dollars, and then yeah, this is this is the this is the prime license. People are seeing seeing this as four hundred dollars plus ninety nine, which should be three hundred. But why? why, Wait, I have a question. Why would they see it like that? Where does it where where does it insinuate that? Well, one says first time, and the other one says monthly. The first time. Yeah, but that's look. That's exactly what it is. Is that not exactly what it is? If the guy's already paid ninety nine, no. 
No, but that's three people or like four people. Like that's a finite amount of people. I'm saying when a new customer comes here and he sees that, does is it not? Because maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's maybe you're right. This is how. But when I look at that, perceived, it, it, it's perceived as four ninety. No, but when I when I look at it, I perceive it as there's a there's the startup cost and then there's the monthly cost. Mm -hmm. Uh, is, I, get, I get where you're coming from. That's not that's not the issue. The issue is just to make sure everybody understands. But yeah, we, 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 yeah. may I interject? Yeah. Uh, sure, Pan. Maybe if the system could recognize if a person has already paid their ninety nine and now they're yeah. upgrading to yeah. broker because it's an upgrade yeah. to, to, to yeah, a, yeah. a prime. The, if the system recognizes, oh, okay, they've already got the ninety nine, so it's going to be an, an additional four hundred. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, three hundred exactly. Yeah. And, then, and then it just continues. So if the system has some way of knowing that, sure. then the person want to be confused. Sure. So what I'll do actually is so. I think my, my developer sent it to me, but I'm on the call. I can't check. So uh, in the latest version, which is coming out today, you see where it says see all licenses at the top? They'll, that button will take you to a page where, like, say you have an existing non-prime license, the $99 one. It'll show that. And then right there, I'll put an upgrade button. So when you click it, it'll then push you to the next level so that Perfect. new users coming here would see what's on the market today. And then existing users that have already procured a different level of a license, when they go to see all licenses and they see all the licenses they may or may not have purchased, they can upgrade the license there, which I think is a more appropriate uh, display of what's going on, right? Well, I uh, like your idea, um, Jack. The issue is, is that when you talk about a brand new person, unless everybody knows that and they wouldn't, uh, he needs to see exactly what you see on your screen. And so one could be maybe blocked. He can't use it because he can't pay three ninety nine. He's already paid ninety nine. Well, that one's blocked. It would be only three hundred. But he would see it, and so that you can talk and not have to confuse it. But like, are you like, are you talk? Are you Alex? I'm trying to understand what your motivation is. Like, who are you speaking on behalf of? Like, no, I'm not asking for a name. I'm just saying what no, no, type no, of I'm person. In all the meetings, it's three hundred dollars and ninety nine dollars. So if you pay three ninety nine and you're going. Or you pay 99, you're too much, and then you decide to jump off. Yeah, but that's fine. That's fine. But that's what Jack just articulated as well, is that you can scroll over to the right and just pay $99 by getting the yeah. instant crypto brokerage license, and then that license will be up here, up here for your license, and you can upgrade it. I'm just but talking the, as a fool. Forget this particular subject in this particular moment. What I'm saying yeah. is there are there are apps that don't show you something because there's no need for you. You can't use it because you haven't done this or that. The problem with that is you now have two people with two different levels of in and they have two different screens and the one guy can't really remember what it looks like if I was at this level. So instead of doing that, you have everything there and you just you just block it so that obviously you can't use it. So that way you go, oh, you can't use it. Well, that's because you're not at this level. And it's just, it saves confusion. Huge. Okay. Got it. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Okay, probably, I just, yeah. probably showing somebody by guiding them through their screen and when I'm doing it, I'm going, okay, I'm looking at line trying to remember everything is, you know. Yeah, but I mean, I have a question. Maybe this is a good, a good question to pose to the field. Like, if I'm signing, if I'm a broker and I'm in the field, I'm trying to recruit someone. Am I not trying to sign them up for Prime? Well, for sure, but it's not. That's not yeah. the subject I'm talking about. What I'm talking about okay. is all cases. Yeah. There are things I can't. Let's say I've already done it, so it's yeah. no need to be there. I don't need to see it. I can go to my app. I've already done that. So the problem is, is that if I'm getting someone else, I I can't relate because my page is not doesn't say the same thing. So it's better to say the same thing and just have it grayed out like it's been used, done, or you can't use it, or whatever. So that two pages are exactly the same. I'm on one end of the world, he's on the other, and I'm saying over here, oh, well, mine's grayed out. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, because you already, okay. Oh, okay, I mean, all right. That's well, what I'm that's saying, fine. yeah. Sure. That eliminates huge uh, talk back and forth and, you know, headaches. Um, okay, so we had something else here. Remember, just one. Go ahead, Herbert. What? I don't know what you can't read your writing. Okay, can you announce as well if the terminal is good to use by any users now to convert their assets liquid to any form of crypto or fiat? Can you still hear me? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah, you can hear me, right? It right, turned into a great big bunch of letters, like two alphabets. You can't see me? I don't know. No. Oh, we can see the alphabets. Yeah, that's weird. Give me a sec. It is. There isn't a lot of people with two alphabets as a name, but <laughs> I mean, I'm one of them. You are definitely one of them, absolutely. All right, well, that's, that's, that's what you got to recognize. Oh God. Yeah, I got another. We still got a couple more questions yet. Oh man. Two left, at least. Two left. Devlin, I haven't man. forgotten about you. And uh, and Bert, I've got one more uh, good point that you've got here at the end of your at the end of your list. Uh oh, did we lose him? Oh, he's still here. 
Is it my? I, I was afraid it might be my internet, but I don't think. Can it was I carry actually. on with the question, anyways? Yeah, because yeah, it shows earlier can, unstable internet. Oh man, how's that possible? Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Oh no, but it's back to this though. Oh right, my God, this is like. Ready? No, I don't have the champagne ready, which is the really sad part. Oh, I should have the at this point. I should, I should have the champagne ready. Give me one sec. Okay, let me turn that off. Hopefully then I won't be able to watch it. There we go. Okay, I'll see if I can get this straight in the format or text that he wants to put it across. So he says signing up people on the broker app is one thing, and getting them to pay for the licenses on GX is another, which requires uh, that they buy Bitcoin first. Why can't they just pay it with a credit card? We can add that. It's only a question. Yeah, we can. It, um, to be honest, the real, the real reason is because uh, we want to incentivize people to buy crypto. Okay. That was the whole point. The brokers make money off that. But um, the... Okay, I could, I... I'm not so sure that it's an advantage, although most companies do offer their products direct payment. Uh, but because our product really is the lifeblood of business, and that's where you want to send them first, so they get used to it, um, I, it's a it's a real you know catch twenty two here. Can you hear me? I can now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, it's a business question. To be honest, like it's uh, it's that close this up. Because yeah. you're because you sell electricity, it makes sense that they use the electricity way of coming into the business. Yeah, I I think that the the overarching point with that would be that that it I'm probably gonna add it, but Alan has like a good point that and that's my point as well, which is that you'd want to educate them, and uh, of course credit cards can have chargebacks, yes, <laughs> for sure. I learned you know nobody is I don't think I've ever met someone that's lost as much money as me with chargeback fraud. So it's a well, you know, I, good, uh... good question for another day. When you buy cryptocurrency, that's like buying cash. So it's it's got nothing to do with that gives that third party separation. So you don't have that issue. Check. No, no. But, but what what Helen is saying is that if you do credit card directly for the license, you could get charged back on the license. She's right, hundred percent, hundred percent. Right. So that's what I'm saying. So if the guy buys cryptocurrency, that's different, right? Of course. Yeah. I mean, if he has, I mean, if he gets crypto, then it's done. There's no chargeback at that exactly. point. Exactly. So that's it. why you don't want to do credit card direct. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that's one of the great reasons why we don't want to do credit card. That's a very good reason. That'd be enough for me. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm I'm screen sharing no disco, right? Uh, no disco right now. Does that mean yeah, yeah. I, I, will, I will show one more thing. I will show I will show one more thing that because of the credit card question, that's interesting. Um, People have wants, like even Alan, I remember like back in the day, I have a question like, oh, can I have a guy that wants to buy like $20 worth of Bitcoin? Can, can he, you have something for him to buy with credit card? And I said, yeah, yeah, we have these two partners of ours that, you know, they've processed that. So we work with vendors like bankers per se on the Insta Crypto app that will allow you to pay with crypto. I mean, pay with credit card, and hopefully we want to get more. So if you actually go to Insta Crypto right now and you click methods, so Alan, watch this. You click methods right there. You see the word methods, right? Click methods. It's coming up with all the different payment methods, right? So scroll to the last one, which is credit card. And actually, we've put both vendors for being able to buy crypto with credit card directly into the app now. So if someone wants to buy crypto with credit card, they can click come here and they can click, for example, let's say Simplex. And then from the app, they go straight to the Simplex mobile checkout page and uh, take some time to load. But here's a quote. So this is the quote engine that comes in, types in how much they want to buy, and then they proceed to being able to work you know, in that capacity. If they use Coinal, same thing. Coinal's a little better because we have our own. They can We send automatically the Insta Crypto address, so you don't need to enter your address again and all that stuff. So saves Bitcoin and then see how. So Coinal's a banker now. Coin is one of our bankers, so they and they accept credit card. So we they are doing that function for us directly in the app. Um, and you're gonna get the quote right here. So say you want to buy, I don't know, five hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin. So now you're getting a credit card quote, just like you would get from a global global exchange for wire transfer, whatever it is. Confirm quote if you like what you see. Um, oh yeah, put in the wallet address and then proceed to the next screen. So you can now buy, I'll take a note of that. You will now buy or at least access the two credit card merchants directly nearest to crypto app and so can your clients. Pretty big, uh, pretty big okay. stuff. Uh, we have, we've, um, I'll tell you something. We've sold 
through our one partner, like just one of them, like a lot of crypto through credit card. We haven't even known. Like uh, sometimes I check the analytics page and I'm like, holy smokes, people are buying a lot of crypto through credit card, even though we don't promote it at all. Like if I if I did a poll of how many of our users know that they can work with one of like Simplex or one of the buy crypto with credit card, they'd be like, I think like five percent of our customers would know. And now I'm putting it front and center in the app, so I think that it'll be be cool. The only issue with them is that the KYC is pretty intensive. So when you do go to the next page, you're gonna have to. Tell them what you ate for dinner yesterday. But that, fortunately, that's the protocol of the banker, right? Yeah. Constantine is right. He's, uh, you know, they can argue that the six month tower or some people are purchased. Better to get them to buy straight to crypto. So I agree with that. No, but my point, my point to whoever asked that question was that well, that's why I showed it to you. If they want to pay with credit card, it is a little bit more of a hassle than paying directly with credit card, but you can now send them to Instant Crypto, buy crypto with credit card, and then pay with crypto. Yes. And you're safe your sale. It's a done. And you make commissions. So and you make another, commissions twice. We have another question here from Devlin. Uh, Southbridge, Dev, Devlin, you there? Shout out, sh shout out to Devlin Pickering in the house, I believe. I, I think I have to turn him on. Hang on a sec. Well, oh, there we go. Devlin, come on, come on board and, and say something. I know you hit your hand up for a while. Sorry for uh, leaving you so far down. Go ahead, Devlin. Uh, you're muted. So bottom left corner, top of you, or top right. Mm. Okay, well, definitely see if you can figure out how that can get going. Uh, there is another one here, Richard Miller. Uh, let me just see, I get you open here. Okay, go ahead, Richard. Yeah, hold on, Pat, thank you. Good evening. Okay, I just un uninstalled my uh, broker's app on my Android. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out by going to Google Play, what is the address that I type in there to download the new broker app? Uh, you don't need to do that. Uh, I think Marvick sent a link. You just click that link and it'll download it to your phone. Like you don't even need to go to Google Play. Okay, so so I, I also, I mean, if you're, since you're on the call, I mean, I'll just send you the link. You can send it in chat? Yeah, I'll send it in the chat. Yeah, I'll do that right now. Give me a second. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. I'll send, can you send both? There's one for each, right? I mean, iOS is, yeah, I mean, I can send both, not a problem. And by the way, like, guys, one of the best, just, uh, so Richard, let me just get you that link because you did ask. Yeah, my uh, question is on the Android app with the new update. Is that comparable to the iPad or uh, the iPhone? Uh, yeah, I, yeah both, of, both of them are at the exact same level. Uh, not the iPad, but the iPhone and Android. IPhone, yeah. yeah, yeah, they both have the exact same update available as of today. So I'm sending you the Android one in the Zoom chat right now. And then, uh, uh, give me a sec. Where's the Zoom chat? Chat and chat to all panelists. Here, control V. So just click that link and put it in your Chrome or click it will open up Chrome inside of your phone and just download it directly in your phone. It'll click, just click download. I made a video, I made a video right before, uh, this call doing a walkthrough of that, the one minute video, just showing you if you have any issues, just click, I'll send you that video too, just, just to show you how to install it. Um, yeah. So well, one more thing I wanted to, I did want to take this as an opportunity because people are asking about downloads. The best way to get the app on your phone, if you don't have it, or the best way to help someone get the app on their phone is actually to send it to them inside of your app. So once you have the app, like you can see, everybody can see my screen hopefully. Good. So I just click broker sync, broker sync, and I can actually send the latest app link to anyone's iPhone or anyone's Android with just text it to them. Right. So if you're sitting with somebody and they need to get the app, just kindly go inside of your app, ask them if they have an Android or iPhone and just enter their information and they're going to get a link with the message. I'm going to get an SMS with the message. So that's a really convenient way of sharing the app. Okay. I still have a uh, uh, Devlin. If you can come on board, he, uh, I'm asking him to have mute here. I don't know. Maybe he fell asleep. I don't know. Here he comes. No, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, hi, Devlin. Go ahead. How are you doing? With your, very good. Go ahead with your question. No, I didn't have a question. I was just saying we're a terrific um, um, session. This is and and, and this this um, ch um, block check is 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 crazy. That's pretty amazing stuff. It's good, isn't it? I like yep. it too. I really like it, man. I'm going to tell you something. Nobody's getting paid directly ever again. They're getting a, they're getting a block check. Why would you? Think <laughs> I, 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 you have to write checks. How many? The day the days of writing checks are gone. Right, just sign checks. Like those. Can you imagine? You know what's really funny about the block check was that like. 
Yeah, it's like the the circle of life, right? Because checks, if if outside of that context that I just explained it, and if you go into ask someone, hey, can I get a check? They'll look at you like, like join the 21st century by <laughs> using a check, right? But it's funny that it's coming back into this fashion. Uh, I think that's a brilliant idea. The block check is absolutely brilliant. I think if we were smart guys, uh, this is how you bring people on board. Every time you have a case, somebody just send them a block check, say that's it. What do you mean? What is that? What are we That's funny. Look, they're just going to get an SMS. They'll be like, yo, someone's trying to pay you. I'm 100% sure they'll download the app. <laughs> they're trying to get someone who's trying to pay you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good way to uh, you know, wake someone up to the reality. This is a new way to deal with money. You know, No more having to figure out how to transfer your fees to that and get it over there and send it. You know, All oh, that's kind of coming on. That's pretty cool. Uh, the question is, what's the next question? He's gone. He's gone. We have one more. I think Jack had a second question. Jack, you there? Yes, sir. I am here. I, have, yeah. I actually have a, I had two questions. Okay, uh, the first one is, how do we withdraw fiat? Mm. What a great question. Uh, I wish I had a good answer. I honestly don't have a good answer, but I have some answers that are heading in the good direction. Um, so the withdrawal of fiat works in the same, it works for Mr. Crypto the same way that uh, depositing fiat works for Mr. Crypto. And that's through one of our banker partners. So let me just explain that. Um, if I open up, you can see my phone, right? Okay, perfect. So if I open up Mr. Crypto and I go to feed and I click fiat, right? And I click say Canadian dollars. So when I open up this, it's going to give me um, this data chart that's going to show me a couple of things. But if I just wanted to look at the bottom here and it says buy, sell, deposit, withdraw, I would click deposit. And it would first tell me if it's even available for deposit. Now, what's the constraint on that? The constraint on that is the amount of exchanges, liquidity partners, local currency exchanges, local remittance companies that we've registered as uh, as vendors on the app. So if that as that increases, the amount of people that can use Insta Crypto, such as yourself, to be able to deposit and withdraw fiat, obviously the amount of people increase. So for example, Canada's already there and Canadian dollars are already there for deposit because we do it. Like we function as a banker or a global exchange. So when I when I click deposit uh, CAD, it's saying, all right, well, what country are you in? You can only really be in one country for this is Canada. And then, well, what currency? Well, it's Canadian. What currency do you have? Okay, I have Canadian dollars. And then it's showing you that you can do it with e-transfer. And for those of you that are not in Canada, e-transfer is like Zelle for Canadians. And so I can proceed to do that. Now, and that's because if I click to proceed, it would say, well, the banker that lets you do that is Global Exchange. And it could, it doesn't have to be Global Exchange. It's just that that's the one that we have right now because that's obviously us and we started with us. But as you can, for example, now see when someone wants to deposit with credit card or pay with credit card, there's now two other bankers that do that. So that's just a matter of increasing our vendors. We built the software so that the only constraint is the amount of vendors because as that increases, the amount of options increase and it's in their complete benefit to do that. Withdraws the same exact thing. So if I click withdraw, it's probably going to say, okay, Canadian dollars pay, see, and see, you can withdraw CAD with PayPal. See, for example, you can't withdraw CAD with e-transfer, right? Because that's just how the, that, that the vendor is saying, stating that that's the method. So click proceed and probably as well exchange for my app. Perfect. And then goes, go ahead with that. So withdrawing fiat is a, not as abundantly a resource that I, as I could, I would like to espouse, but B, has no limitations. It's now just a matter of us expanding our vendor base, which although to Alan's chagrin, Alan has told me, hey, focus, focus, focus on getting more bankers and vendors. I've just said, well, I'll focus on that once I've uh, finished with uh, the user's side. So really it's just, you know, chicken and the egg scenario. The kind of the promise or uh, what, what you should be optimistic about is the fact that you don't have to worry about us doing it. And what I mean by that is like, it's not like I'm sitting here saying like, yo, we're going to figure out fiat withdrawals in every country, that's actually impossible. So what we're, what we, what the the greatness of the Insta Crypto app is that it has nothing to do with us, or it has nothing to do with one particular exchange. It uh, it enables you to accomplish your objective by whatever means are possible based on the amount of vendors. In some ways, you could look at it like if you need to take a ride and you're in, let's say, Paris, there's going to be quite a bit of Uber drivers that are available for that. Versus if you're in you know, a, a more obscure location. But of course, Uber's objective as a company is to populate it as much stars as possible so that anybody anywhere could do that. And that's also our objective. The greatness of that is that there's no limitation to what Uber can do. They just have to focus on that chicken and egg dance. And that's the same thing for us as a broker. You now have to imagine like, whoa, that means that if Global Exchange can't figure it out, that's not a problem anymore because there's another person that can figure it out using Instant Crypto and I'm still getting paid. 
Okay, I know you're going to hate me when I bring this up, but this is my question. And so it's, actually, it's not really my question. It was really brought up by uh, David C., who I've just opened up, if he wants to, if he wants to describe his question, or I'll, I'll do it for him. But, um, and he's not the only one, there's another one too. But uh, he lives in a country that is really not friendly in financing. They're just, they're just behind the scenes in, in a lot of directions. Their credit cards don't do stuff, you know, all this kind yeah. of thing. Anyway, sure. uh, he wants InstaCrypto to be in his country, and, and, and strange enough, so do I. So um, InstaCrypto, the only way it's really going to be in his country is if a bank that is accepting their common services, such as, yeah. you, know, you know, Gizbitcoin card. Okay. Gizbitcoin okay. card is accepted in this one particular country, and that okay. guy who sells crypto um, is come on board with InstaCrypto, and now yeah. anybody who lives in that country can use their Gizbit card, which is their normal uh, way of paying in that country, to buy yeah. the crypto from him and then be in InstaCrypto, correct? Yeah, I mean, it's one step simpler than that. They don't, the Gizbit card accepting character, he doesn't even need to want to sell crypto. He could simply be on InstaCrypto just to do fiat deposits and make money, like fees off of that. He, he could, of course, also sell crypto, but that's not a prerequisite. What I'm saying is he wants to be able to build his business where everybody can use the common method of payment. Which is good. Sure. No, are you talking about the broker or are you talking about the banker? I'm talking about the broker. So the broker oh, obviously, well, obviously, obviously the broker's objective is to, to do that. Yes. Okay, so, talking the about broker, the banker. Yeah. so so wouldn't it be for him to open up his country, right? If he goes out and he finds somebody who's selling Bitcoin, he's accepting Gizbit card. I'm saying even you don't even need it's even one step simpler. He doesn't even need to find the Gizbit guy selling Bitcoin. He could just find the Gizbit guy selling shoes for all I care. You get my point, like um, sorry. I'm uh, no. I'm saying is it, it has not, it's not a prerequisite for the guy that's accepting. Fee. Let me let me give you an example so you get it. Um, because I don't want to speak just in you know theoretical terms. Before you give me an example, please the capture the picture. He wants. Hundreds of thousands of people in his country to be able to, in a, in a simple format, to be able to come in with yeah. their common method of payment to get anything done is Gizbit card. Got it. And your proposition is? What are, you, are you asking me a question? Like, how is that possible? You already you answered the question. You answered no, your no, question. what I'm saying is, uh, he, he, a, a, an answer to it is go to somebody who sells Bitcoin who accepts Gizbit card in his country, and we bring him on as a uh, banker. banker. Yeah, yeah, of course, that's that's the simplest way to do it. And I'm saying you don't even have to do that. You can even go to someone who simply just accepts Gizbit card for a, some other business, and they can even leverage that as an option, right? So let me give you an example for that, right? Um, say I'm not selling Bitcoin, but I'm, uh, you know, I, I think I got it. So I'm, yeah, I, okay, I'll like I'm not selling Bitcoin, but I'm a business and I have a PayPal account. I'm just giving this example, okay? I have a PayPal account and PayPal has approved my business model. It's something. And now I can accept PayPal from people, right? And I can be the banker on global exchange and debit and credit that user in dollars. No crypto needed. The only thing now, so look at it logically, right? That got, so, okay, let me let me walk it perfectly. When, when I went through that example, what did it say I could deposit CAD with? E-transfer. So the only way to deposit CAD is E-transfer, right? Okay. But the guy that can do an E-transfer, say that's Alan, he, he's eligible to do an E-transfer because he lives there. He has a business that accepts PayPal. But we don't accept PayPal because PayPal won't work with us. For, I'm just giving an example here, right? Now, Alan is capable of doing an e-transfer, but Alan's customer is not able to do an e-transfer. Alan's customer, however, is able to do PayPal. And so now Alan comes on board as the banker. PayPal is now added as a payment method to Insta crypto because Alan supports it. Alan takes the money in PayPal, and since he's able to e-transfer, e-transfers, and the user is now credited in CAD or USD or whatever, Alan, without even selling the crypto, has made his fees. Of course, if he wants to sell crypto, he's all he's all able to do that as well. In other words, you don't need people that just need some crypto. You just need people who, who can collect money. And usually, in any country or community that's kind of financially restricted, they're already... They've already self-selected who's the one guy that does this business. And yeah, yeah. I just know I noticed that. So I just want to say, so in the Philippines there are two thousand seven elevens, and the seven elevens you can go in and buy Bitcoin from, which is unheard of. Okay. Uh, well, now, clearly two thousand stores have heard of it. <laughs> yeah, well, at least two thousand, you know. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, uh, so just to put it in a nutshell, he can go to the local common, you know, dry store. 
And you can say the right store, look, I'd like to make a new have a new service and make money by offering crypto. And yeah. because you accept Gizbit card at your yeah. price, which is common, every company with Gizbit yeah. card, yeah, and yeah. you will now be able to offer this service by simply uh, keeping a little stock in well, Bitcoin to one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, okay. you don't even need to keep a stock. You can even go one step further and tell them they can keep their stock in Tether, which is stable if they don't even want to go crypto. Because like, if you look at like, I'll now give you an appropriate analogy. I think you're right. We're both agreeing that everybody gets what we're saying. Western Union. Why is there one hundred and forty thousand Western? Union? Everyone know this is one hundred and forty thousand Western Union locations. I will tell you right now, they're not locations. They put Western Unions in everything, right? They put them in like libraries. Every I'm joking. Box. Every like shady gas station and like Arby's. <laughs> Whatever, right? Well, the logic there is that they went to the owner of the gas station or they went to the owner of the convenience store. You know what? I saw a lot of Western unions and passport picture places and stuff like that in Toronto. Oh, Capital so anyway, America. Right? Capital so, yeah. America, they got them. I mean. Yeah. So, yeah. so they went to the owner of the convenience store and they said, listen, boss, I don't think selling chewing gum and coffee is going to get you far. Why don't you add this revenue stream? And this is what you have to do. You have to collect the money and you have to hand it to us. And for doing that, you get to keep a 1%, whatever the fee is, right? And the guy that's already standing there for 24, 7 hours a day says, sure, why don't I do that? And that's exactly what you're doing with being a banker on a right. So now that we've got that understood, so everybody can see the, the light bulbs go off. Okay, now we can see how we can, you know, open this country, that country, this country, and not necessarily- I would say city, I would say city, but okay. A city, I'm not necessarily with physical locations because there are online businesses that work specifically to a country that you can tax right. them at. And then we have to look wider. But my point is, uh, is it possible to dumb it down with a simple fill out form? So if I went to a guy who's selling Gizbit, who collects money through Gizbit card, who now take this position, he could, he could just fill out a little quick form very easily and get hooked into Instant Crypto and be part of the whole deal without too much of a process, a way to dumb it down. And then is there an advantage in some way, shape or form for the broker to do that? Just to grab one or two guys and actually uh, maybe earn a half a slice out of that. Yeah, so there's no, obviously we all understand the indirect advantage, right? Because you're increasing the amount of options for your customers. But the direct advantage is that, no, there isn't a form because the only form they have to fill out is they have to become a GX user, just like everybody else. So the first step in being a banker is obviously like the first step in being a broker, like the first step in being everything else. Take the five seconds and make them a user. Well, guess what? To be a user, you need to be, you need to have a referral link. So guess what? Whose referral link they're going to use? Yours. So I'm a broker or I'm not even a broker. I'm just a customer who signed up for broker app. So now I have a broker link and I find out that my, my, my step dad is like opening a gas station or something. I'm like, oh my God, it's a great opportunity for me. And uh, I go to him, I'm like, this boss is always going to work. And he's like, all right, cool. So then I register him, his email underneath me. And so then he collects his Bitcoin from every person that walks in and he then Put to funds his GX account because he has a banker account and with Canadian dollars, for example. And guess what? Every time someone that does a trade with him because they're doing it through that Gizbit, I'm overriding that because that's a transaction. So I can override bankers as a user. Of course I can. And a banker does more transactions than anybody else because he's trans he's he's transacting with people that are not even in his downline. Because he's transacting with anybody that finds him on Instagram crypto. That might be a little bit of a complex concept to understand right now. But just know that you override every single one of their transactions because there's no special sign-up form to be a banker. I mean, there is, but it's after they become a GX user. Well, what you're, obviously, what you're saying in fine print is that a prime broker has all this advantage. If you're not a prime broker, what are you waiting like seven days for your delivery? Like Amazon Prime. Come on, man. Sign up for Amazon Prime. Like sign up for a prime broker. Okay. Um, That's an excellent way to bring on board. So now you get somebody who can be a prime broker and they get to be a banker and supply from there. No, they get to they get to sign up and override bankers. They can be a prime broker too. I mean, my point, Steve, listen, let me let well, me I get this really a banker clear. becomes a prime broker. Oh sure, 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 sure. Um but when you're trying to sign up a prime broker, I mean a banker, excuse me. What does the banker have that the prime brokers don't have and the regular people don't have? The banker has a business model outside of global exchange, outside of instant crypto, that can be enhanced via, not enhanced, that can be augmented, make more money by adding this as a business because he's already collecting money in some shape or form. See, the brokers aren't doing that. The whole point of being a broker is you don't have to collect money. The whole point of being a banker is that your whole job is to collect money. Well, guess what? He's not just collecting money to stare at it. He's collecting money so that the clients that are giving him money can then fund their instant crypto account. All of those are transactions. All of those you would override as a broker. Right. I mean, as a prime broker, forgive me. In my opinion, Insta crypto with every possible seller from every possible type of card or method of payment, all these weird countries, 
I mean, it's strange to think that, uh, you know, e-transfer isn't available in the state. I mean, come on, there's nothing better than e-transfer up until now. And yeah, there, was, was, there, there was this thing called blockchain, but I'm, I'm joking. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but at the end of the day, blockchain's better. I'll play around, I'll play around. It's extremely strange that the U.S. wouldn't take on Canada with e-transfer because obviously it's very superior to whatever they got. They have Zelle. Like Zelle is a company that does something like e-transfer in the states, right? But like, but your point. So this is my point. Zelle and e-transfer, which if you closed your eyes and did bull transactions, you'd be like, this is kind of the same thing, have no relationship whatsoever. So now you have a customer in Canada, you're a broker of a customer in Canada, and global exchanges bent over backwards to go sign up Zell, and the guy in Canada wants to do an e-transfer and you're like, oh my God, I can't help him. So then you just go find the merchants in Canada that can use e-transfer and that's it, you opened up that market. Right, beautiful. So now we can literally open up countries all over the world. And, okay. and cities, I would say, but okay. There's a reason why Philippines has 2,000 uh, 7-Elevens that take Bitcoin. It's very simple. The third Some guy brokered that deal. <laughs> Some guy yeah, that exactly. Deal. But the third world countries are into crypto way, way more percentage-wise than first world because the first world already has cushy, easy, no well, pay dollars. Uh, payment methods and stuff. There, they don't even have bank accounts. I mean, 87%, which is 87 million people in the Philippines don't even have bank accounts, but everybody's got some sort of Bitcoin something. They don't have a lock on their front door either, so therefore they don't have any money underneath their, their, their pillow or mattress. So that is actually true. That's not true. Is that true in Manila? Like, I know that's true outside of Manila, but like, that can't be true. No, there's nothing in Manila. No, there's no well, last time I went to Manila, I felt like people had it locked. <laughs> like, you don't want to put a lock on the door, then they just break a hole in the wall. I mean, you might as well leave the door open. Man. You can't go nowhere in Manila. That's just so traffic. Traffic is the craziest city in the world from traffic. Well, to yeah. Um. So I would listen. Anyways, I just want to say that it was huge. Uh, it's a huge. It's a business. Huge business. Yeah. Here's a timeline. Somebody's asking timeline. Constantine is asking, "What is the timeline for Insta Crypto on iOS?" It's on iOS already. I mean, if she's asking, or sorry, he, I, I don't know the. Wait. If he's asking, um, when is it going to be on the App Store? I'm honestly just holding out because there is actually might be a reason why I'm only, I can tell you guys, but I mean, it's already available on iOS. You can use it on iOS all you want. You know, there's an Apple test flight link. It's Merv, send it to him, please. You download it right now on your iPhone from Apple, but it's just not public on the app store. I haven't made it public yet. Um, the reason is uh, you can download it and use it and share it and all that stuff via iPhone, but I haven't made it public. So again, I don't know how much you can play a part in some complexity, but I hope it doesn't. Um, Apple is pretty annoying when it comes to apps that help people make money. Like, they're not the most friendly with those. <laughs> and, uh, they, had, they, don't think they, they, they definitely don't think that's what we do yet. So I'm, uh, I'm, it's not, we can't avoid being on the app store. We have to. There's, not, there's no choice. But. So Constantine made a good point, and that is that uh, Canada with its six major banks is much easier. That's why we're the best banking system in the world. The United States has a whole pile of them, and they haven't all got together in you know, two minutes, like 4,000, right? So uh, that's why they have too many private banks there, and that's kind of why that's uh, a, Canada's advanced. No, but I mean, from a from an instant crypto perspective, that's better because you can have more banks to work with and more unique payment methods and decentralize the amount of fiat banks you work with and all that good stuff. In Canada, if you get if you get banned from one bank, you're good. Sayonara. Okay, Bird has a number of questions uh, on the Q and A tab. I'm just going to say uh, it is it is uh, uh, 35 minutes to the next uh, intro presentation. So yeah, I, gotta, I have a, I have a, I have a webinar to do as well. So like, we take I, a lot of can I see? Time, I'm just wondering, where is it? Where, he says it's on the Q and A tab. Yeah, it's Q. There is a Q and A tab that's different than the chat tab. You just see it down there. I see it. But in some countries, it's often difficult to buy Bitcoin. It's extraordinarily difficult to buy Bitcoin in almost all countries. I, I, Philippines seems like an exception, but I've been to the Philippines and it's not like buying coffee yet. But in no other countries is even close to that. Yeah. Need address for downloading broker app to Android? I think I passed that already. Will GX have its own? Oh my God, what a question. I'm going to spurt. I'm purposely skipping that question. I'll, I'll get back to it. Um, this will be great convenience stores, Mexico, specialized cash in Mexico. Yep, Latin America is a huge market for bankers. Um, where is the assets.io app? I had it on my phone. It disappeared. How do you download it? Why is it not available for download from broker app? Assets.io. Oh, great. Oh, Bert, that's a phenomenal question. That means you've gone into the place, into the broker app where you can download instant crypto. Um, assets.io doesn't have a mobile app yet. It's only web based for now. Uh, and we'll have a mobile app soon, but assets.io is web app is, is intense. And that's what it is. Assets.io actually has a desktop app, Windows and Mac that I'm releasing, but, uh, it does not have a mobile native app yet. Instant crypto and broker app too. Okay, is that enough for this right now? I didn't. I didn't notice there. Now I'm seeing them all, all in here. Ralph got one in here. We didn't talk to him. Can I get recorded? How can we set it up for a corner store? 
We're gonna try yeah, to we can have a question. Them. There's a banker's telegram chat that Ariel set up that, I mean, if we want to include the brokers that want to get other bankers started, we can include you guys in there so we can converse and create plans for them. Infrastructure is already there. There's already a banker.app website and you can sign people up. It's already there. I just don't talk about it often because, uh, uh, to be honest, when you open when you open up the floodgates of adding a banker, adding bankers, it's not going to stop. That That's just going to go to, to, to pandemonium. Yeah, it's just, your, your concern is just that we want enough volume to keep them busy is what you're getting at. No, no, they'll bring the volume. What do you, do you, first of all, you have to assume that they're not coming here for you. They're coming here for themselves. And so, so like, no, I said, we want, you want to make sure we have enough volume for them to keep them busy. You don't want to have 50 guys offering one service for one person. You want, you know, yeah, well, that's true as well. Yeah, of course. But I don't think that's also an issue because it's like the more drivers you have in Uber, the more customers you're going to get. Like I said, it's chicken and the egg. It's very literally chicken and the egg. My concern is not that. My concern is, I don't have a concern. I just, I know that. The getting bankers is easy because they're already so hyper invested in their own business. Getting what I'm doing here with you guys right now is actually the more difficult part because it's in what I'm showing you in Instagram is a new paradigm for you. It's a new paradigm for the user. It's not a new paradigm for the bank who's already doing a money business and he's now just it's creating another me medium. So I'm doing the more difficult thing first, knowing that, you know, uh, put it like this. How many taxi drivers became Uber drivers? A lot. Like I would imagine a significant percentage of Uber's driving force is former taxi drivers who Uber put out of business. Okay, so for the people that are driving Uber today that were taxi drivers, is that a big difference? Is it the biggest difference from driving a taxi to driving an Uber? No, but it's a huge difference for the guy that's getting into a stranger's car. And so that really is the management, but it, you need one and the other. And so ma managing that process is what we're doing. But at some point it just gets an equilibrium threshold where it's gone. It's You just won't be, nobody can catch it because Every banker brings new customers. Every customer brings new bankers. And it's a vicious, vicious cycle. We're going to get into it. Guys, that is SugarPet. And the State of the Union number one has now uh, come to an end. I will tell you that we're going to do it again. And we're going to rock it. And it's going to be even better. And it'll keep going every single week. So we'll... Presidents only give State of the Union like once a year. Once a week is a heavy schedule. <laughs> yeah, we're not telling anybody, by the way. Nobody knows that we're going to have one every week. No one. What's going to happen is sometime tomorrow or tonight's meeting, we're going to announce that there's a special event coming up on Thursday with the CEO of sure. And we'll do that uh, regularly. So please, uh, please, please, please get the apps, use the chat, yell at the chat, ask your questions in the chat. That is the number one way to learn how to use the app, speak to the support team, ask as many crazy, dumb, smart questions as you want. That is how you speak to us. Please, 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 please do that. Everything else can follow because that is the ultimate communication tool. Right. And you've now placed that on everything, right? Come on, man. Is it every day? What's happening in your app? Oh, my goodness. What's happening in your app? <laughs> oh, man. Come on, man. So what's happening in your app? Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, so unless anybody has anything specific, uh, I would like to thank you on behalf of all of us today. Uh, I think the all eyes have been open for a lot of us. And we can see there's a huge future. There will be glitches along the way. When you're when you're the one running through the forest and building a a, a, a trail, you got to cut down some trees, okay? And so we're going to do that together. But at, we're the first. We're the very beginning of it. And he's sharing the wealth with us, even just by allowing us to get into Prime Broker one time fee for absolutely next to nothing, three hundred bucks. So Can I say something I, about the one thing that? Sorry, sorry, I would please. I don't want to interrupt your rant. Um, absolutely, there will be glitches. I will promise you, there are no glitches with what I showed today, that first thing I showed, which is buying your license. So remember, on the last call, I said there would be no more glitches with sign up. You can sign people up. You can send them the app. That's true. That is actually true. Today, I said minimalistic accomplishment. You can now deposit funds, trade your funds in Insta Crypto if you need to, buy the license. One exception, I need to just make sure you can buy the license with any currency. And if you cannot, you can still do your trade and then buy it in USD. And if you should be able to, I'll give a confirmation on that by tonight. All the other things I showed today, they're ready to rock and roll too. But the guaranteed thing as of today is everyone can sign up. Everybody can refer people and get them started for free. Everybody can now deposit funds and buy your license. So okay, the basics, not, we're covering the basics. Yeah, not to end on a bad note, but I do think I have two people now that had enough money in their account to buy and it said, in yeah, no, I, I get that. I, I know that first, my assumption is that they're not using the updated app and that's not their fault. Number two, uh, they might be using it. I know one of them for sure was trying to pay with a different currency, which is why I said right after this call, I'll do a couple of test transactions of cross currency purchases. But one of the things that I revealed is that even if that's not the case, and I assure you it will be, he can now just trade it in Insta Crypto and do the transaction. Okay, so that is uh, aimed at uh, Jack and Raphael. But if you if they have any furthers, 
Uh, I'll, I'll certainly be in touch with you. We'll try and get them out of the way. Okay. Support chat, support chat, support chat. Be patient and the support chat's where it's at. Yeah. Guys, uh, that was great, man. And I'm telling you, we learned a lot. And this whole uh, chat block, oh my God. Blockchain. Why are you going to make me reveal? Why are you going to make me reveal? Blockchain. 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 I like it. I think we should really promote it, guys. We're going to be all over it. I'm going to get some. I think it's phenomenal. We'll Absolutely. Presentation. Incredible. Here we go ahead, Chuck. Oh, the, the block check was is new. I'm, I didn't know that about that till tonight. And that is Either. superb. Absolutely, he infrastructure. Try anything, man. It keeps yeah. me in the dark. You see with blinders yeah. on my on my on my like this, you know. And please don't use block check for inter GX transfers. Okay, yeah. Unfortunately, Alan, I can't let you finish before I show this. If you're doing a transfer to one of your other GX accounts in another GX app, or you're doing a GX, uh, you're doing a transfer to one of another user in another app, don't use a block check. Just use Connect. It's much quicker. Because block check requires them to confirm. So if you're trying to transfer to another GX person or one of your other apps, just click again, your trusty top right hand corner, right? And instead of clicking block check, you click connect. And now it's asking you, are you transferring between your own apps? Meaning like my Insta crypto to my broker app or vice versa. That's what I did first. Or am I transferring to another user? So I could select the app I'm transferring from. I could select the currency that I'm sending, which I'll send, let's say, uh, tether, and I'll select the currency they want, which let's say is a yeah, you know, little tether again. I can be a different currency. I'll put in their GX email, so I'll type in Red Baron um, at sorry twenty twenty. You need the you need the D. Red, yeah, you're right. Or else it's just re, or else it's re Baron, re Baron <laughs> at mail dot com. Next, so then it finds the user. Hey, that's the user. We found a match. Is this your guy? It is the guy. Click next. Type in the amount of tether. Five tether. And click send. Five tether. No. Well, you don't want it done. And so now I just lost five tether. I've just lost five tether, but Mr. Allen has gained five tether. And that's it. So when you're doing inter GX, any any random GX option, anything at all possible, do connect, do block check when it's someone else in the external world. Just want to put that out there. Connect, close team, insider scoop, block check, everyone else. Everyone I really got to start using block check. I just, I, I oh, want an excellent way to grab more customers. Yeah. Anyways, guys, unless there's anything specific, we're 25 minutes away from the next uh, live intro meeting. And uh, double thanks for, you know, Sir Pan and his time and uh, picking up some new exciting items. Uh, glad to hear couple of old ones fixed and gone out of the way. We're moving forward. It's going to get better every single week, guys. So uh, bring your guests. you got 25 minutes. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank Bye. you very much.